about uh, Randy? I, I feel like the, the floor is yours. I think you said you have some things you want to say about this most recent event. Absolutely. First of all, I just want to say it was a pleasure having you know, some new blood on the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope, you know, I hope this, this uh, negative outcome will not define us, but, you know, lead to better things in the future. I look forward to having you on the squad for, um, you know, not only Quail Hollow this year, uh, going over to Rome, mm. you know, all sorts of Solheim Cup, Spain, Solheim oh. Cup, all those. I forget what character. It's always been a corny quote from uh, Vanilla Sky, but without a little bitter, the sweet ain't so sweet. So we tasted the bitter, and then we're going to get our sweet over in uh, Rome in a couple of years. We truly got in on the ground floor because the building collapsed. <laughs> also, we got a great uh, a DM from Dave Gutile who said, Euros may struggle in the next couple of Ryder Cups because they're stacked, uh, but they are stacked with captains for the next 10 to 12 years. You're, you're telling me that the, the Euros have to wait two years to go get redemption? Like, that's going to weigh on them for the next two years, and they're going to be chomping at the bit. It's going to make it that much sweeter or that much more devastating when it does happen you know, big thing that we've discounted for Europe is, is, for going to, to uh, Rome is like, you guys are at a massive disadvantage because Zach Johnson's going to be the captain. Mm. I haven't talked about that. Well, that was, that was my point is, you know, Stricker, unbelievable President's Cup performance, unbelievable Ryder Cup performance. What's the, I mean, I guess you just have to let guys have their shot, but if you're serious about winning Ryder Cups, why not let him keep going? Club today. Yeah! Yeah! I mean, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. Expect anything different. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Laying Up Podcast, Sanderson Farms Preview Fall Series Discussion. Uh, Solly here in our hotel. Of course, the show is presented by our friends at High Noon. DJ Pi is here. Hello, Pi Man. Ole, Solly. That's that's all I got to say. USA is terrified and Europe is on fire. KVV is here with us. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Solly. How does it feel to uh, have you know European prediction come true? Uh, myself, GC, Randy. I'll pick this one. I'm getting it from all 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 yeah. angles here. Yeah, it yeah. depends on when you ask TC when he picked it because a couple weeks ago he picked, okay. it, he picked a tie. But I TC feel like, is I feel here like I'm going to need to be like Phil with Hunter Mahan. Just hey, <laughs> you know, Kevin, we're all we're, proud to be on this. Yeah, team. we're all proud to be on this team. That's that's a clown so, question. <laughs> I don't have to answer that. I said I wasn't going <laughs> to cry. A stupid question. I don't need to comment on that. Uh, TC is here, humble in victory as always. Hello, TC. Welcome. Hey, Sally, uh, congrats on a great week. Both teams played hard. Um, you know, just a couple bounces here or there. And I, I think we're looking at a completely different Ryder Cup. So, uh, you know, hat, hat, hats off to you. No, of course not. Like, you guys, you guys sucked. <laughs> Disgrace. We'll, we'll get into it. Can I tell you the worst cheer? They're the worst, you know, rope line yell that I, I heard this week. You know, we're walking walking through many, many fans of uh, of the program. Always happy to to hear people shouting us out, shouting to the podcast, blah, blah, blah. But we're I'm walking. I get like maybe 10, 15 steps past somebody and someone just yells at the top of their lugs. Justice for TC. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and it was right as there the cup go. ended. It was just just really devastating <laughs> point blank stuff. Uh, listen, I feel like we're going to get going here very quickly, but if you're a tequila lover who is never satisfied with malt-based hard seltzer offerings, you're going to love new high noon tequila seltzer. It is now available nationwide. Uh, uh, Cody is showing it off right now, popping on the screen. I can't wait to get home. Cody, what do you got? What flavor you got there? Passion fruit. fruit. My favorite. Passion fruit. fruit. That's a really good one. Uh, made with real tequila and real juice. Clean finish because it's made with real Blanco tequila. 100 calories, gluten-free, no added sugar. High noon tequila seltzer is available in four bright, crisp flavors. Strawberry, lime, grapefruit, and the aforementioned passion fruit. 
Great for any occasion under the sun. A lot of sun here in Rome could have mm. definitely used uh, a couple nooners out there on the golf course. Um, so try the High Noon Tequila Seltzer. Look for it on Drizzly or at your local convenience or liquor store. Visit highnoonspirits.com to find it near you. Shout out to High Noon for sponsoring the live shows all season long. This will be the last live show of the year. Um, I, we're gonna, we have other complications with Sanderson next week, so we will not be going live. But TC, I do promise we're going to let you have your time, and, and, and I know you're going to take us up on that. KVV is only with us for a short window here as he's going to go right. Uh, so we're going to turn turn it over to him shortly to uh what, what's your lasting image or how are you reconciling what we just witnessed in the Ryder cup what's your overarching takeaway uh i think i said on the first night that uh, i could never ever pick the u.s again in uh europe uh no matter how much they might be favored because i think that they just have shown over and over again whatever iteration of team that they are that especially in foursomes they just do not know how to make it work over here uh, I think my biggest takeaway, and Rory alluded to this in the presser, is that it's going to be a coin flip in Beth Page. I actually think that the Euros have built something that I don't know that they're going to win, but I think that they have a better chance of winning in the United States than the U.S. does in Europe. And I'm going to stick by that. Uh, I think it's going to be very close. Uh, I think it's going to be a hellishly intense Ryder Cup. I think we were talking today, like, in Europe, they sing songs. In Long Island, they're like, go for <laughs> so i'm not sure the creativity of the crowd will be matched but the intensity will be uh exceeded uh and so my biggest takeaway is europe has built something uh that is really kind of uh as down as they were two years ago they have reloaded man and they still have enough horses at the top to sort of sustain them until the the young colts at the bottom figure stuff out and i think i'm gonna write a little bit about this at like so my question in the presser was like, what does it mean to be a European Ryder Cupper? Because America is united by flags and by borders and by language. Europeans, by by on paper, should not have this kind of unity, and yet they do. And whatever reason it is, they play for something larger than themselves. That's kind of a cliche, but I really fucking believe it after this week. You can just see it. You see how much they care, how much they're invested in matches that they are not involved in. You see him dancing on the bus going bonkers afterwards with the trophy. It's just kind of inspiring. And I, I think the Americans would sort of claim that's not fair. We're like that. Yeah, but you're not always that like that in losses. Like you have not shown that you are, you know, a little bit better kind of camaraderie that they were joking a little bit and kind of having some. But I think we all know that like they, they are not as sort of tight as the Euros. And I asked this question to Jordan and Jordan about foursomes. Was, and he said, you know what? It is foursomes is about like personality in a lot of ways you have to figure out how to make it work with somebody until the u.s does that they're just not doing it in europe kvv how dare you say that you know steve stricker <laughs> said that he's never seen a closer team than this one I you how know what that was a party line that? tc that was a party that was a talking point in the press mm -hmm. conference afterwards i think six or seven or eight guys might have might have said that god uh you know what kev i i I was, I got to kind of I put the fedora on or whatever, wherever that's around, but I'll, I'll put, I'll give just a macro apology for a lot of Justin Rose shit. Yeah. Team Rose. Oh, thank you. Boards. You guys are familiar with the resume. <laughs> TC, I know that's your guy. <laughs> and you. uh, he blew me away this week, whether it was in the team room, whether it was holding a lot of putts. That was my favorite answer of the Ryder Cup was your, the answer to your question about what does it mean to be a European Ryder Cupper? And what he specifically said was, talking about all the greats that have come through and that in the wrong hands is such a cliche but as he starts listing off the names of Seve and Ollie and Faldo and Woosnam and all these guys that have played all these Ryder Cups like it, it really hit me that like go ask you know not to pick on anybody but like go ask JT go ask Max go ask any of these guys like hey name your favorite old U.S. Ryder Cup moment before no, Tiger no, no chance no chance no chance and what they might say oh zinger whatever but zinger didn't actually didn't have that many no. rider like really any good rider cup moments he had let a lot of losses to sevi but 100 percent agree and whether that's a fair criticism or not i mean i know sometimes the talent just wins the day and we've seen that in the home rider cups but i was i was really really struck by that that like those guys know rom said it so as he is wont to do said it, i'm taking the hat off because i'm not this is not part of the apology uh <laughs> keep, keep it near me I <laughs> Rose said it so, or uh, Rom said it really, really beautifully in that I believe what he said, and correct me if I'm wrong, was Ryder Cups are won by the team that's the best at forgetting who you are as an individual when you show up. 
and you like walk through that door when you walk through that door you have to absolutely forget what came before what's coming afterwards we were talking about this i, I was you know we we're using the baseball analogies a friend of mine who is a scout was talking about how he looks for there's a difference between guys who are teammates and guys who are accumulators the guys who care what their personal record is at the end of the day the guys who would rather go five and zero and lose than go zero and five and win and i think people are probably tired of hearing that cliche and they, they say a lot of like, Oh, well, you know, don't give me the bullshit that like the Europeans are closer and that's why they win. It's still about talent, blah, 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 blah. It's not that it's, it's a sum of a million of these things. It's culture, it's team room, it's bonding, it's planning. It's, it's Which, not just their buddies. It's that they're like, there's 15 things all coming together. The and, whole point of that being, it helps you play better golf. Yes. Right. It answers the question. It makes of you like, more comfortable. Well, yeah, it's like, yeah. it answers the question. Like, why are you very good player in everything we've ever seen? And probably in other moments in the Ryder Cup when you're at home, why are you shitting the bed right now on the road? Like, there's several names that we will get to when we do grades on of that on the U.S. side. How does that U.S. team, I still think is a very talented team. I only regret a little bit of what I've said coming into it, because I still look at this and say, how did you, Scotty Scheffler, not win a match? How did you, Xander Shoffley, go one and three? Like, all of their top guys, literally every player on the U.S. had a losing record except for Max. Yeah. And, like, that's just stunning. Like, it's 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 gone on so long. This is seven in a row that it it's beyond – It's there's enough – information and and looks into it to say like there's something different about when they go play over there and they've not gotten that trip right in any way and they i thought it would be different this time and it turns out it is not i thought the i thought the different player pool was the most important thing that they didn't have the scar tissue and they would go do it uh i think we've been you i think whoever the first person wanted to, to like call out like they're the best front runners i totally agree i think they win the first session two and a half one and a half i think they win this Ryder cup and they just got too far behind and got their souls evaporated on friday afternoon and tied the next two days like it wasn't like they were horrific for three straight days it was just one day didn't get off the bus they were toast and that was that was the that was the Ryder cup tc yeah, I thought it was really interesting. Like JT's sitting up there saying how much they bonded. Like, you know, no no team's ever been closer. We bonded so much during the scouting trip three <laughs> weeks ago. But you know what? Like only nine guys were on the fucking scouting trip. <laughs> and the two guys that, that were like speech is excused. The two guys that weren't there, cool, Xander and Pat. Like we're there, like there, there's two just, things yeah. just to, to lend credit to, to your point. Sorry. There's two things that really, really, really made me laugh that were unintentional own goals by the United States team, which is no team's ever been closer, man. No team's ever been closer. No team. We are not fractured. We're not going to let this stupid hat bullshit divide us. And only like four guys come out without a hat. <laughs> it's like one that's just like, oh, dude, come on. Like you guys can't even do that. And then two, exactly what you just said of just like, we're so close. We're so tight. There's no fracture. Oh, really? When did you bond? Oh, the trip that I guess those. Yeah, I guess those guys weren't there. I guess I didn't think about that. <laughs> also, so, it's hey, just really so bonded funny over to me. This hat story. Yeah, right. Yeah, and exactly. it's like they needed they needed this hat story to get motivated for the fucking Ryder Cup. You kidding me? Right. Like, like I, it's just it kills me. And then it's all to your point of like if if Friday is different, then the rest of the thing feels different. And I'll go back to something you said on Friday afternoon evening. It was like. Well, like, there's no way they could have turned it around. And I think, like, yeah, there's no magic bullet, but there's a bunch of – it's just like you said, Deej, there's 10, 12. There's 100 different decisions, little things that add up to a big result, right? And all those little things, I think, is what Zach missed the boat on, the details, the stuff that, that Luke Donald was doing in the team room, the little video he does at the beginning of the week. There's, there's hundreds of little details, and they all add up, and – we can diagnose why later in the pod, but I just, I think that it was a master class from the European captains and I want to see them run it back for New York. That, I think but, but, it's but like, just, it's like Luke Donald, like came into this 18 months ago behind the eight ball after Henrik Stenson leaves for live and, God, and, yeah, you know, and that. like, and like, you know, a third of their team is gone, which I think in the long run is, is a massive, massive benefit. Cause it kind of, wipe the slate clean in a lot of ways but he, like he just he ran fucking circles around zach johnson what you know really in, in multiple regards really quick on that what well, was talking to some our, our friends at the the dp world tour and they were just talking about the opening ceremonies and it's so stupid it's so small but even just the his opening remarks the way he spoke italian the way he did all these little things was just like dude that's a guy that is treating this as his full-time job He's not parachuting in for a week. He's not. And I know Zach's doing other stuff and they're, they're 
they're rolling on like a two-year window or whatever but that those little things i'm, I'm so with you add up they, to just like dude that guy's taking it really they seriously said it today they were rom after his match said the the videos that like yeah. luke made for us yeah. he looks like Which he alluded to like up. two minute two minute videos they just said from loved ones yeah like so, people who are really important so, so luke, like who knows what luke those, went who, around those or videos. had someone yeah. go around to like not other golfers but like people who really like are your family members whatever and had them make videos basically saying like you know you're gonna do great this week. I care about you, and like all of the European Ryder Cuppers were like emotional about it, and like, holy shit! Like, how about like way to put you in the right headspace that you're loved, that you're you know in this sort of a safe yeah. space of like you can go out and and do the best of your abilities, and and playing so playing the part, like, I, the like part, the three hole matches, on. all you know, all sorts yeah. of stuff. There's there, there's a hundred different examples of all this stuff. Meanwhile, Zach's getting up and can't even put together a fucking coherent sentence in a press conference. We'll get to Zach. I, I, I think our, I think we have a tendency of doing this after uh, these every single one of these European Ryder Cups of everything you just said, everything everybody just said about everything is all in place the last time it played in the Ryder Cup, but it was in the U.S. and they lost by 10. Podrick, sure. like they did all kinds of crazy videos, all kinds of amazing stuff in the team room. That's the fair. European tour guys were coming up to us. You wouldn't believe the team room last night. They revealed the number that Shane Lowry was number 168 to play the Ryder Cup. He stood up. He's he could have run through the fucking wall last night. It was incredible scene. And they went out and got beat by 10. Like <laughs> Listen, for sure. We're on a trade-off of back and forth that is going back and forth and act like the US in this competition amongst US fans and European fans. The bar is just I win it and the check the box and then you have to go in the next one or else it means nothing. Right. And we we heap all this praise on Europe, uh, you know, after a win and then the U.S. wins and you just kind of like brush it off. Like that's where it's at in this process. And that's where it's like I, I, I would if the if Europe was going over and whooping the U.S.'s ass in the United States and also doing this. I would, I think I would view this all differently, right? Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It works at home right now. Rory's the only one of this group that has won a Ryder Cup on the road. And we just are stuck in this back and forth of five straight Ryder Cups. This was the tide for the closest Ryder Cup of the last five years. And it was a total ass whooping. I give more weight to Hazeltine than I do Western Straits, though, because it yes. was different. It was a COVID year. A lot of those old live guys were sort of like part of the team when they really like did Lee Westwood yeah. and, and you know, Ian Poulter really need to be part of that team. Like they did, we were allowed to sort of, you know, clear out some dead weight there. Hazeltine, I thought was a very impressive, very sort of coherent plan. They, you know, they figured out a lot of shit in there to taking it forward. I don't give as much weight to whistling. I mean, I, I do think the the whole lack of fans things, which I know Europe loves to bring up. I do think there is some relevance to that. Sure. And just, you know, the idea of like, Hey, you like this? This course was set up so perfectly for your guys' players. Like, uh, I, I think Hazeltine was a much better victory in terms of the US. also, Solly. I'll say part of the reason we gas him up is because you spent the better part of two years diminishing this team and shitting on them and saying they didn't have a chance. <laughs> like, straight I mean, up. I I, d I did not say I did not one single time say they did not have a chance to win in Europe when they won the last. I, I will times. counter that on uh, to come to Sully's defense here. I don't think he diminished the European team at all. I think it very much was pr extremely high praise of this superstar dream team that Team USA is supposed to be. Thank you, TC. That, thank you. Cody. This is absolutely. That's why I thought it would be different. No honestly. one believes in us. Locker yeah. room talk from TC, which I appreciate. That's what you got to do to win. But our friend, our friend Kyle Porter said, "Hey, in back in at Whistling, it's not going to be close in Rome." And he was right. Like yeah, it kind of yeah, wasn't really close, it. just listen, not the yeah. way that he thought. Looking back at, and listen, like privately, at least one member of the European Ryder Cup team after Whistling voiced the same exact thing that I was feeling of like, "Oh, uh oh, Europe's in trouble for the future." And two years later, and you guys said this in the in the RV, like things can change in two years, and it clearly has changed. I think. The U.S. team did not come in playing their best golf. Has a bunch of question marks to answer. A bunch. They didn't of come in playing stuff. golf at all. That's that's, that's one of part the of the problem. We'll talk about. That's leadership that's one too. Of the we'll talk about. But uh, no, I was not. Like, we 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 played this whole process out over two years. I, I, even a year out, you got off the pod with me and said, "Wow, that was surprisingly level-headed about all of this because there were some opportunities for Europe I will to get say, really punchy you've at come the bottom around. of the lineup." Yeah, you, you come around. You just said for two years I've done nothing but to I said the this. better <laughs> part of yeah, I said the better part of two years. <laughs> the better part of two years. I didn't say two two full years. I said the better part of two years. I think also yeah, pretzel like and pretzel crime here. It's it's <laughs> very gotta very wear, you got to wear this. <laughs> it's very very clear that like Rom is that dude, right? Like and, Rom's that dude. Hovland. Hovland's Hovland. probably like ascending to best player in the world 
no doubt Murray's got status. probably two more Ryder Cups in him. I think Rory's going to be still a very uh, excellent player. He'll yeah. be 38. This is Rory's best Ryder Cup ever. Yep. Yeah. Four and one. He's never done that before. At a dare, Rory would be 38. And at, at a dare, you think he's going to get up for that one? Dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, TC, I want to hear from you. Does the, I mean, I think I know the answer, but <laughs> does Europe have a chance to win at Beth Page? Yes, absolutely. 100%. I think, I don't know. I just think this, like, it, uh, like I, I think the stalwarts are there. Um, there's going to be more depth, like the guys that are falling off, like Rose, like, listen, hat off to Rose, no pun intended. Like he played his ass off the last two days. Um, Bob McIntyre, same thing. Like he, but like those guys probably aren't on the team next time. And I think that, you know, yeah, I'm sure it'll be a dog shit setup with those flat greens and, you know, very, very straight holes, but I just I I have confidence in this team that like especially if they run it back and knowing the stuff that Jose Maria and Eduardo Molinari and Francesco and Bjorn and Colsertz and all these guys are doing behind the scenes versus what's going on on the U.S. side with with you know Freddie Couples basically interloping and 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 muddying the waters or knowing that like like t- Tiger's not the savior guys. Well- on you know. on on that note, TC have on on quite good authority. I actually talked to some of the scouts guys today, and I was expect I was kind of like nudging up, like, all right, give me the lowdown, like what 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 they do, how they screw this up, and they were extremely effacing and almost mostly off the almost entirely off the record combo of just being like, yeah, we got a bunch of stuff that like we got to look at on our process, like a bunch of factors that we did not. We have a lot to learn from this one. This is our first like being first European Ryder Cup being fully involved, and there's a bunch of factors that we didn't wait properly and. I was I was actually kind of surprised. I expected there to be a little bit of like, yeah, I man, we told them to do this and they wouldn't do it, and there was that there was absolutely none of that. So I know we kind of threw that out there of potentially rogue slash woke ca- assistant captains uh, on the U.S. side, and I've not been able to confirm that uh, in talking to people close. To I team. just uh, I just feel like the task force is is total bullshit. It's it's they had better players for a while. And it's a closed system. It's a closed loop. It was to keep some of these guys out of a captaincy and they, they need to reevaluate it. TC, I think someone sent me in a note today. They said, Hey, do you think that this will make the U S like reevaluate how they do things at a dare? Like, will they come over ahead of time and spend longer time on the course? Will they really commit to this stuff? And you know what I thought they will not, they are too stubborn and thinking that their way is the right way. I do not think like they did talk, a little bit about this in the presser Spieth alluded to like it would be better like if the Ryder Cup was closer to our FedEx Cup playoffs so that the layoff wasn't quite as significant maybe not the week after but maybe you know we're a little sharper like we're in a little bit better form I just do not think I do not see the U.S. I think you know it is American mentality of like hey we do not have to adjust our way of doing things we're just going to figure it out the way that we think we're going to do it I there's no scenario I think where they're like yeah jet lag really affected us in, in and Rome, so let's go over 10 days ahead of advance. I just do not see that. How do you get Cantley and Xander on a plane and be like, yo, I know it was like a bit of a struggle for you to commit seven days to this, but we really need you to commit 10 days to this now. I, or yeah. I think or you're, even you're, guys. Yeah, like Vic, did 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 Hovland, Rom, uh, Rory, uh, like did those guys not play the FedEx Cup playoffs? Did they not play the Tour Championship? I know they play more European tour events and this is their home tour or whatever, but like, like be, be more flexible, adjust your shit. Those guys went through the same gauntlet that most of the U S guys did too. You know, I think one of the best things I was telling Sally about this out on the golf course, one of the best things I've ever heard about preparation. Cause I think your point is well taken. I don't know if the answer is spend more time there. I don't know if the answer is spend less time there. I don't know if spending more time just makes the pressure build even more for that first day. Or I, I don't know what the answer is. But one of the best things I've ever heard was I got it kind of secondhand. So we'll just say one of the players on the European team was going to play their first Ryder Cup and ended up like basically bringing their psychologist, psychiatrist with them, uh, not passing out drugs on the first team, uh, <laughs> their psychiatrist with them and was kind of like, or hey, astrologist. Psychologist. or yeah. astrologist. That's <laughs> psychologist is right. I think there. psychologists like prescribe drugs. Okay. That's that's psychiatrist. Okay. Yeah uh either way it was it was the non-pharmaceutical doctor uh went to the first tee they were playing their first Ryder cup and they they did an entire massive session all around the golf course about just like let's go to the first tee let's walk down there 
look around. What do you notice? What are you thinking? What are you going to be nervous about? What do you think you're going to be feeling? If you're feeling that, what are you going to do? Let's go up to the top of the bleachers. Let's look down. Let's think about what all these people are saying. How's that going to make you feel? What are you going to do when you start thinking about that? Let's go to the first green. Let's go to the 18th. Let's go to the locker room. Let's go do all this stuff. And they just did like, like again, this was like a secondhand story. So who knows like the, the really hyper specific details, but that blew me away as far as just like something very simple that I'm like, dude, that Scotty Scheffler was not Scotty Scheffler on day one. And I don't know how you account for that other than just call it nerves, call it discomfort, call it being unsettled, call it not a good game plan, call it whatever. But like that guy gets up for everything and he's been the most consistent player we've seen of the last five years. Probably. I mean, his floor is so fucking high and he what shot 80 yesterday <laughs> would have shot 80 if he didn't get closed out on the he shot like 11, six, yeah. the 11th hole. And like, I don't know how else to your point. It's like, man, I don't, you got to do something else to like get these guys more comfortable rather than just being like, no, 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 no. We're just going to like make you sleep in your own bed. And we're going to like, make sure the food is delivered on time. And we're going to make Brooks, sure like Brooks gets nap time. <laughs> you can work out at the time you normally work out at. And like some of that, I'm, I'm not scoffing at all of that, but I think there's, I think there's some like psychological shit to it, man. And it's only going to, I mean, it's a dare's only going to be worse than this was because now it's 34 years instead of 30 years. And it, like they're, these guys are going to think about it for the next four years. And these guys are pretty young, man. A lot of those guys are going to be on that team again. It's not like there's some big turnover coming. And that's where I, I talked myself into getting hype was because it felt like in, in talking to people close to the team that it was like, it felt like there was a process in place, right? It, it, this, a lot of stuff was thought of and it was like, okay, we're not just, doing the eye test and going off gut and showing up and and like the, I, they don't typically make a trip over to play the team at, right. I mean, the, to play the course as a team that was i think a couple of them went over during the open championship to play france in 2018 i know jt famously went yeah. and played the french open that year but it that was a new development right and they did that for whistling the straights as well and 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 obviously dominated there like there looked like there was some stuff in place like all right there's no excuses to not know the golf course now you did a scouting trip can go home here's what you need to work on blah 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 come back i don't i don't personally think like spending more time during uh, on in advance of Ryder cup week will change anything i just don't i think if anything is they maybe spend too much time having four practice rounds instead of three like that you're used to having in the week leading up to it i i don't i don't know how you get past like what what these guys turn into when they put the peg in the ground specifically in foursomes and I, i'm not going to do the math like right now but if i i would guess if we went 2014 2018 2023 that the four ball slash singles record it would be really close in terms of being close to 500, if not 500. And the foursomes record is truly one of the great disasters. It is like one format that they cannot do in any form or fashion. It's, it's, it's uh, guys, I think something else like Patrick Cantley's wedding is tomorrow. Yes, it's it is amazing. He planned his fairly wedding normal behavior, TC. I don't know what Monday after the Ryder Cup. Like, it's not like this is like a new date for this thing either. I mean, it's. <laughs> Like, like I've been on the books it's crazy you see, i have a i have it from I, I i think i feel comfortable saying this there are probably three to four people who are going to from the team who are going to patrick's wedding so this idea that like they're super united to me seems just a little bit like i, I don't think like his wedding is like a, a sort of maybe deal it's breaker a small wedding of, or yeah, yeah totally yeah. could be a small wedding but you know i i did I don't think that this idea that they're fractured is probably accurate, but I do think this idea that there is the closest team we've ever been on might be an indictment of all the previous teams yeah, that they've been on totally. more, more than like a, Hey, like we're actually really tight. I, I think they have a, pretty some big, guys are tight. I think I'm they sure. have a pretty big tendency to confuse. Nothing's wrong with everything's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, tight, the tightest tight. team. All that means is that you don't have one of the old guys in there. Like, who's it, taking it, all the air out of the room, whether that's Phil or Tiger or one of those guys. That's all that means is that they're they're the same age. I'm sure they get together. Occasionally they have dinners or something like that. But all these guys talk about whether it's Ryder Cup, President's Cup or Olympics of like this pride of like being able to wear the red, white and blue and represent my country. That's the furthest thing that this team actually demonstrated. Oh, because that's, that's the whole thing about this. If it's, this. if it's the tightest team you've ever seen, like, sh we need to see some form of it. Like, we're watching every one of your moves out there. Like, we're looking for you guys to be out there with matches. We're looking for dudes to, like, sell out for your team. Like, look stupid. Who cares? If you lost your match, go out there and, like, support your teammates and just cultivate an actual culture. And if we don't see yeah. any of that, then when you say it's the tightest team we've ever seen, 
like, that's not going to pass the smell test. Like, it's just not. I mean, it's, it, the whole point is that it's supposed to contribute to better golf, too. Like, that's the it part It feels that like they're, they're trying to convince themselves that this is a tight yes. team, convince everybody else. And it's like, cool, man. Like, that's wishful thinking, and I get it, and I get that, that all your heads are in that place. But, like, that's clearly not the reality here, nor the results manifest that. And, I would and I love to really hear too, like prepping, like, okay, Zach, you've known this for two years and you want to you know, lead out with, if we're going to go in the buddy system on all shot, like, when do you think the last time that Scotty and Burns like played all shot together? Like these guys play week in, week out. They're going to the same exact fucking courses. They don't need to be playing a million of these practice rounds. Like when is the last time people are actually practicing what a major deficiency of the style that the American team plays is? And I, I guarantee a, you for the majority of them would be last fall in Charlotte because they don't I, fucking do it together. I To that point, I finally found this Justin Ray tweet. So if you saw me scaring on my phone, I wasn't up page. I was trying to find this Justin Ray stat. The seven to one advantage in foursomes for the Europeans this year, tying the largest margin since 1979, which was also 2014 by Europe. The last three Ryder Cups on European soil, Solly, foursome points one. How would you guess how many? Three. Four. They won one yesterday. Four. Twenty to four. Yeah. Twenty to four. <laughs> but uh, and but then again, the, the, oh, the most frustrating part, and you were saying this on the way home, was like when they get asked about it in the pressers. And I know those guys are exhausted, and nobody wants to like really crunch the numbers and give like a super thoughtful answer. Kevin, I believe that was you that asked Ricky Fowler, like, what do you guys got to do to get better in foursomes? And the answer, and and Spieth kind of said this too. The answer just kind of turns into like. You know, I think we just kind of got unlucky, man. You They're know, I think, in. I think they chipped in and, <laughs> you know, I think they, you know, they kind of made the plays and they we didn't, didn't really... say unlucky, but they were dismissed. They were in denial about it. They, they that were... was what they were alluding to. It was like, you know, Long they, kind of, they made some putts and, you know, we didn't really make any putts. And, you know, it, it was kind of the sense of like, well, you know, what are you going to do, man? Ball bounces that way sometimes. And that's where it's like, ah, 20 to four. God, so, what a picture. But here's the hard part uh, over. Um, <laughs> so going back to. Uh, back to 2012 in home foursomes for, for over the last two Ryder Cups, they're 11 and a half to three and a half. The U.S. is it in home foursomes, and then uh, they went uh, five and three um, in 2012. So what is that? Six and a half losses and 16 and a half wins over the last three home Ryder Cups, in one, including one that they lost. Like at home, this has been this this format not a problem. Like it just the Ryder Cup comes down to or has come down to over the last plus dec uh, several decades, how much of a home field advantage for some format is. Do That's you think difference. between now and let's say Adair Manor that they will work on foursomes at all, that they will play it they'll together play it three like, times together. Like they'll play it in two president's cups and a home Ryder cup. Like that's more than Europe. Of, will. I don't think Europe, I don't think Europe practices foursomes and then goes and dominates at home. Uh, again, Europe's going to have to ask this, answer the same question at Beth page. Why do you guys suck at foursomes on the road? Like that's the question, the same question on both sides. The, the, the record over the last two years is like, there's no the last uh, four Ryder Cups. There's no bragging rights. They've just traded it back and forth of like, at home, we dominate you. And when we go on the road, you dominate us. Like that is how this the last several years of this has gone. There was a time period where Europe had a step. They won five out of six. Like they had the dominance in this thing. And now it has turned into these guys just trading it back and forth in not close Ryder Cups. I mean, they've won 10 out of the last 14. Yeah, I mean, you, if you go back to time periods where none of the current guys are on the team, it it obviously favors Europe. But that culture is still permeating through. Well, and that's said. what I was going to say. And that's where I, I don't... Uh, TC, please, stand down, stand by. This is not a... Pa I'm not... There's no pass to be given here. But what I will say about the culture stuff is when John Rahm and Justin Rose and Rory and, you know, all these guys are talking about shit that happened in the early 90s and 80s and stuff, like... That takes a fucking long time to <laughs> to figure out, right? And so it's like I don't think that between now and you know, between now and Beth Page, like the US team is gonna get in a room and like clockwork orange each other to like go watch old Ryder Cup highlights. Like I don't think that's how the culture works either. So they have to like figure out what their own culture is. And that's where it gets really bleak to me. Is like, man, I don't I think that's where they kind of become like, I don't know, man. We all just kind of like hanging out and looking at our phones and watching college football. And, you know, occasionally we kind of give each other some shit. Oh, and uh, Brooks, then Brooks we, is a Texas fan, dude. Yeah, you believe truly, that? truly. And that's where I'm like, ah, if you guys even knew all the same songs, like, would you even sing? I don't even think you'd sing them. And that's where, again, it's like, well, maybe it's not one size fits all. They need to figure out what their own culture is and figure out what makes them all tick. And I, I, 
I have no fucking idea what that is. Truly reminds no me idea. a, a okay. lot of like the the heyday of Bill Belichick and the Patriots. How like you they just have this this aura. They're so good. They have like the leading players at each spot, offense, defense, you name it. But like every year they got to go down to Miami. And those fucking dolphins are gonna get them somehow. Throw the records out when these two teams play. <laughs> you know, and like oh, at oh, home, oh. at home, it's a different story. But like, man, we're going to Miami, and it's not good. And it seems like you, you know, from whistling to last year, Quail Hollow, like this team's riding pretty high, and like maybe they didn't need to do all the bonding stuff. The thing that stuck out to me most in the pressure on the Euro side is like they talked about their scouting trip, and they're like, yeah, but like at the end when we're playing golf and we're like, we're all sitting around a campfire and right. we like found out things about, uh, about each other that like we had never heard before. And that's not Luke setting those questions up. That's whoever the, the psychologist that he brought on board. That's the performance coach. That's, that's giving him lists of things to ask. That's like truly bonding. That's it, it's, it's about breaking barriers down, being a team, not playing for like you individually or whatever little pocket squad that you're playing for usually. Like they truly did that. And I think this is a good sucker punch to the phrase to this American team that is like probably the best that we're we have seen in a long, long time. But they just got to get their shit together. And I, I know Beth Page is going to be no different than whistling, but like a dare manner, things have to be different. Guys, so I think, I think one thing too leads. that's getting blocked. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Sally. I'd say one thing that uh, to sum up what you just said, Cody, if I were to just like summarize it, the things that Europe does culture wise leads to uh, the, the down the road effect of that is guys playing with comfort. Like those guys, even the rookies have like comfort in what their role is on the team. And it feels like so much of what the U.S. does leads to pressure. Like it, it yeah. leads to like feeling a burden of needing to overcome things and needing to, you know, take on the crowd and this team and not creating that 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 comfort level if that makes any sense scotty embracing it versus nine and being seven scared i don't know how else to like say yeah, what it. the fuck do you do about that <laughs> right? nine and seven well, i think so that's I, wash over point, Tracy, i had like, some conversations with some people yeah. who absolutely know would know this today not media people who they did not know it was a bit of a panic move that they were going to play together and force them that day they, it was a it was a hey like we need to have a spark and turn this around. And so they threw him out there and obviously big fucking disaster. <laughs> so that was a Zach move that you can absolutely be like, yo dude, like if, if your whole like analytics process or, or gut process or whatever was building to like, Oh shit. Like uh, we got to put Brooks and Scotty together in this in is they were going to play four balls together and they ended up playing foursomes and both of them were like, okay, like we got to make, try to make this work, which you know, they didn't complain about it, but they didn't know they were going to play in that session together. It's just funny to me. Like, like we can, we can talk till we're blue in the face about preparation and this and that. Like sometimes it's just about answering the bell. And I think the guy that like, you can pin this squarely or not squarely on him, but massive, massive disappointment. The sixth ranked player in the world, Xander Shoffley. Yeah. Like, he didn't play. Like great. he played like a, like a pussy. I mean, it was it was bad. It was really bad. He putted poorly. He just didn't show up. And like Patrick Cantlay got all the all the flack, and Xander is right there with him as far as all the pre stuff and and everything going on behind the scenes. And his dad allegedly acting like a like a complete maniac. Uh, I, 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 heard know, I talked to. I don't know if you heard this today, but really? I talked to Stefan. This is going to be my story. I talked to Stefan at length. He was absolutely like, yeah, he Patrick deserves to be paid for being in the Ryder Cup. Like you'll you can read about this. He he yeah. went on and went in at length about how ridiculous it is that they're not paid. So, you know, and this is on the we were like, can we talk to you on the record? Dylan DeShare yeah. and I from golf.com. And Stefan was like, absolutely. Like to ask me anything you want. And he went <laughs> went deep on it. You gotta so, I know you gotta run yeah. do your walk off line of what also also he said. Uh the one thing you're allowed to print. He said, we said, you know, God, we had, TC, turn your microphone up. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to do my Stefan Shoffley here. He, we had talked to him for maybe 15 minutes and we were like, you know, he was like, do you have any other questions to ask me? And I was like, what, J Dylan said, what do you think about Jay Monahan? And he was like, oh, <laughs> I have a saying that I've been saying around this is if he had the spine, he would resign. <laughs> All right, Stefan, I'm back in, man. I'm back in. <laughs> we, Dylan and I were both like, 
oh wow okay <laughs> like yeah, and he was like and you, and as he walked away he said i didn't print that <laughs> You print that. He's been making Lee, Sky Lee, 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 Germany. And print it. <laughs> he's been making Sky Germany hits all week. Like, oh, he's been really getting has. DMs from people of like, oh yeah, like Stefan's just spouting off. Uh, like, like it's no secret that like if these guys, like if if the Saudi framework stuff falls apart, like these guys are off to live. And like, like heard stuff this week of like Patrick pointing directly at Guy Kinnings and basically saying like, hey, like I want to make more than that guy right there for the Ryder cup. Like, like I need to be paid more than him. And it's like, so, so, so for all this stuff to get twisted into hat, this or hat that, or it's like, dude, you didn't show up for half the stuff prior to the week. You didn't show up for half the stuff during the week. You played your ass off, Patrick hats off to you, but you know what? Like Xander's right there with you. And like Zan, like it's, it's, it's a duo of malcontents and, and they're, they're off doing their own thing. And, there may be these other 10 guys that are united and, and they, they, and they rallied around some adversity yesterday with, with everything. But man, it's like, you're both culpable. You're both. I don't actually for mind this. going forward though. If you're a U.S. fan, I think Patrick played a pretty good version of Patrick Reed, like the Patrick's yeah. Uh, yeah. Going forward. He embraced the negativity in ways that probably made him a better golfer. He was weirdly smiling a lot. Yeah. Like that's maybe among the it. first times I've ever seen, seen him smile when he came out and he's looking at the crowd. It wasn't like a, my agent told me to smile. I think he was truly like, fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> ah, I love, he, I've never seen somebody look so much like the emperor from uh gladiator. He looked like Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix when he came out and just, just kind of giving these like weird, like backhanded waves. Uh, it was, it was very Patrick very Patrick and Freddie Couples are like the only dudes out there when when Xander's match finished up like that that speaks volumes to me it's just it's something where like I I think even in the post game presser that was the most likable I've ever seen Cantlay it was yeah like they were he great. was actually like not <laughs> being a complete dickhead to the media for the first Z time Xander ever. Xander pre apologized for everything that uh, his dad said as well. <laughs> I sick. just want to lean in. He I must just want to apologize for everything. I talked said. to Dylan and I. <laughs> uh, Kev, I know you got to run. I, I want to know lasting image of this of this Ryder Cup for you. Walk off. Uh, I think it's. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking at the, at the image of you <laughs> with suspect eyes at ZJ from TV. Yeah, I did. I, says, I got uh, I got memed a little bit. It was truly one of my proudest moments on Twitter that Art but make it sports uh, took that and <laughs> made it this. made it uh, into a, a picture of me. It's quite funny. Uh, I love that account. Literally one of my favorite accounts on all of Twitter. Uh, I did wander into the background of the uh, the Zach Johnson Steve Sands interview. I did realize that I was in the camera shot and, and quickly moved to the sides, but not before a, a hundred uh, wonderful NLU fans screenshotted it and sent it to me. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, Zach, you know, he got very emotional. He cried a couple times in that interview. Uh, After think, your crying column. That's, that's too. true. I think he, maybe he read it. Uh, I think Zach cares. I just don't think that he was a particularly great uh, captain. And I think, you know, any idea that he, that he should – <laughs> run back would be woo. I, I don't know oh, who's going to be the crazy. captain for beth page uh, i would love to hear you guys i'll, I'll listen uh, as i depart who you think should be the next two captains uh but it, it just wasn't it, whatever juice that they needed to have to get it up and going here he won the dude not it mm -hmm. and that's that i will fedora that and i talked myself into that it, he was that the team was strong enough that oh, he wouldn't matter so and big it, of you it did not it did not turn out that way it did not turn out that way so can't believe I have to apologize for not shitting on Zach Johnson after a career worth of it. KBV's got to go. We got to, uh, just like Patrick Cantley, we need to get paid. Uh, this episode <laughs> is brought to you by Titleist, the number one ball in golf and the number one ball at the 44th Ryder Cup. The best players in the world are playing a golf ball that's fit to their game. Why do Victor, Scotty, and Max play the Pro V1? Why do Tyrrell, Ludwig, and JT choose the Pro V1X? It's all about flight, spin, and feel, and comparing the Pro V1 versus the Pro V1X. Pro V1 will fly lower, spin less in the long game while producing similar greenside spin and softer feel. Pro V1X will fly higher, spin more in the long game, have a firmer feel. Playing a properly fit golf ball is the only way to play your best golf and shoot lower scores. Go to Titleist.com where you can start the golf ball fitting process through Titleist's golf ball selection tool or by scheduling a free one-on-one -on -one video chat with a Titleist golf ball expert. If you're not playing a ball, it's not spit for your, uh, fit for your swing and your launch conditions, you are 100% 
losing strokes. This Gotta is, go figure it out. This is a subtweet of Zach Johnson and uh putting guys out in foursomes that, that had no idea they were going out together. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Uh we yeah, we gotta double click on that on that one. Guys, guys, real quick too, like I, I don't even disagree with Cantley. Like I know twenty percent of the revenue is going to the the uh PGA tour and they're being strongly advised to put that into the pension and all that. Like maybe that needs to go directly to the guys that are teeing it up this week. Um, but it's it's just like the way you go about it. And it oh, and God, especially yeah. on the heels of like the last two years of him just being the squeakiest wheel of the bunch. And he's livid that, you know, Brooks has a massive escalator in his live contract. If he gets on the Ryder cup and all that, like it's, it's just, it's all of it. It's the whole context, right? There's a really interesting conversation to have. And I'm not, I don't think we need to have it right now because there's more interesting things to talk about. The, the pay for play thing is, is very interesting. I think being there on site, seeing what the fuck this event has turned into, I, I'm not saying I agree, but I see where it's coming from in totally. having yeah. 700 people inside the ropes with every group, having all the things that they got to do to to get into it. And and maybe the end of that conversation is that, you know, maybe Seth Wall and the PGA of America need to do a better job of telling the story of where where the money for this event goes. Right. Because I know it goes to funding PGA Junior League and the PGA Professionals, and it does a lot of really good stuff. And I'm not doubting that. It's the same as when we talk about the PGA Tour. Right. And it's not some are there a couple executives making, you know, are there are there four executives making like pretty good money? Sure. I would say hockey tens of millions of dollars are also going to like charities elsewhere it's as a massive net positive for why the pj tour brings in so much money and i know the pj of america is a similar situation they do a lot of very 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 good good stuff but until you're doing a it's kind of like the usga right where it's like like man i i know that you guys are probably doing something right but like you're trying to shake me down 50 bucks for a bag tag and like i have no fucking idea what you do <laughs> Other than just put a million commercials on my TV when I'm trying to watch the U.S. Open, I, I don't know what you do. And I think the PGA of America is in kind of a same, a similar boat. And when you have an event like this that is sold at 400% capacity on every possible aspect, every T sign, every commercial, every hospitality experience, KVV was laughing all week about how they had like the, the, sweatshirts and hoodies and t-shirts and stuff tc are, are here they have the big Ryder cup logo on them and then most of them say marco simone underneath i'm sure you've seen them there's a whole branch of those like out wandering around the, the grounds so that just have the Ryder cup logo and then they say worldwide partner on them <laughs> and it's like yeah that like that's it's kind of what it's about like there, there might it's like they might need to be the more self-effacing well about. right but to counter that it's like all right we we have we have guests on this podcast, right? We have had Patrick Cantlay as a guest on this podcast. We did not pay Patrick Cantlay to come on the podcast. He, we ran ads on it and we profited off of it, right? But he does that interview as a way of reaching to golf fans, making himself, you know, approachable or a, attempt to. I don't know if that's the best example that I could have given there, but also to like give himself exposure for his his sponsors and whatnot. Like there are other ways to benefit from. Like it's so short sighted to think like. I would need cash for this event. Like you, all the brands you're just talking about, if you are like likable and engaging, they're literally right there and they will want to do business That's with you. Totally fair. They will sponsor yeah. you yeah. if you like they a lot of these companies spend a lot of money in golf and they want like BMW is a friend of the brand with Rory McElroy. Like that they want to associate with that guy. And like if if we're talking about paying these players and making it this transactional, it wipes out like 50 minutes we've we've spent on this podcast of like Look at all the things Europe do is doing, and we're talking about the most basic, like fundamental yeah. thing of like all of the things that make the European Ryder Cup experience great. How much they want to do it, how much they love it. I guarantee. I'm guessing Nikolai Hoygaard is the most, the least uh, well paid person in that room to this point in his career, and I guarantee you, he's not thinking about getting paid for this event. He's thinking about that being like the most special week probably he's had in his golf career, and maybe he ever yeah. will. I'm sure he's going to be on future teams, but like that's what that's about. And like, if you want to, if you want to be like a professional golfer that is responsible, you know, you're going to make a fair amount of your income through sponsorships and being likable and being approachable and making impressions and having a freaking pip that pays you money based on these things and having a personality, or do you like want this to be as, as transactional as possible for probably less money? I don't know what the dollar amount is for this. Is it a million dollars to play in this? Is it $5 million? Like right. at that point, 
I, again, how do you giving captains six choices of who to take? No, that's totally like fair. it's it's way too messy, and also, like there's no benefit of bringing this up. You're not going to win this in the court of public opinion. You're not going to win it privately, and it's nothing but a distraction. And he's gonna like he's got strongly heckled for it. I think it is kind of borderline whether he he should get heckled heckled like that in the sporting event. But I don't know if you're going to treat it that way, then that's probably how fans are going to treat it as well. So that's my rant. couple things. Like Max was talking about like dreams. You know, and like how this is a dream come true and all yeah. that. You don't, you're not hearing that out of Cantley. Also, the tour's getting 20% of this. What's to stop them from giving the players that qualify for it 50% of that 20%? I think, I think their mandate. That's the whole, that's the whole thing, right? Like they have to distribute money equally. That's how we got in this whole fucking hornet's nest of. No, but couldn't you say, with. all right, like there's, there's a bonus associated. It's just like the PIP. All right. There's a bonus associated yeah, for maybe. making the, the, uh, you know, Ryder Cup. Also, this is a preview of what's to come. These guys are going to do the same thing for the majors moving forward. But can we? Like it's, can that's we a talk? Fucking hornet's nest. Yeah. Uh, this is the part of professional golf that makes my head yeah. want to explode. K the, today was one of my favorite. We'll come days back. We'll of come back year. to that in hour. Three. I, I, we'll do it all for the next two years. Like uh, we got totally. all that's the next fine. two years. I'm just, I'm just getting it out there. I this know. is coming. I, oh. I want to know. We, we've done a lot of negative talk on on Team USA. We've done a lot of. Uh, we're framing this in a in a very uh, you know negative way. What what were you most proud of of your boys on Team Europe? What what was what's going to stick with you the most? Uh, Tommy's approach. I know he missed the putt on fifteen, but Tommy's approach is into fifteen and sixteen. Like after after his playing, a, like your opponent rinses the shot on sixteen. And then, and then you stand up there and you still hit the shot that he did. He could have easily bailed out into the bunker or whatever. Like that was, that was massive stones for him to do that after Ricky puts it in, like in the middle of the lake. We know? talked to we talked to Finno about that afterwards after they clinched and we we're standing on 17 green and he goes Ricky hit in the water and Tommy you know is looking at me and like kind of thinking like what do you what do you think we should do and he goes honestly man like hit it on the fucking green like it's the best club in your bag. Just, just go do it. And he's like, he hits the straightest drive I've ever seen. And Solly shows him the, uh, the pro tracer. He's like, no, nah, it's straighter than that. He's like, that, <laughs> that doesn't do it justice. It was, it was, it was way straighter than that. And it was just those two, man. I'm so happy for those guys. They had such an awesome week. And I, I think I forget if I told the story on the podcast Friday or not about Djokovic coming up and asking to asking to take photos with Finno and like what that meant to him and how he was, he's always the guy to take the photo. And he's like, man, the fucking top five sportsman in the history of the world is asking me to be in a fucking photo. He's like, that's what this event is doing, man. He's like, it's unbelievable, man. Where, where else is that going to happen? And I was, just, I, I'm so happy for those guys. They, they were, yeah. I know I, I personally have, have given Tommy a, 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 you know, can we call him like we see him, but it's, it's been a tough closing out some of these events, not been fun to, uh, to ride against them in any kind of way, even in a in a somewhat jokey way, it was fucking awesome to watch watch them slam the door multiple times. Fleetwood seven yeah. and two uh, in European Ryder Cups in twenty eighteen, and this one seven and two. That's a I think an asset. Um, it's really really cool to see. I thought Hatton had an awesome week. Like, yeah, truly, like that was you know, quietly played yeah. great today. Just I thought seeing Robert McIntyre, like I know he didn't, you know, he got just two and a half points. Missed that shorty today, and I'm like, oh shit, this is this is not good. <laughs> and then you know, just seeing seeing him come out of the gates today, fired up, was cool. Um, we'll do yeah, we'll like, do grades on it all if you yeah, want. I mean, yeah. We're gonna go. We'll go through. And, I mean, and grade I think real quick though, like like being being 100 sincere, I thought the the Rose Cantley match was awesome today. I thought oh, it was so those fun. putts that Rose made. Down the stretch, you know, 15, 20, 25 footers that are are going dead in the center of the hole. And just the resolve that he played with. And then conversely, the you know, the 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 uh, performance from Cantley. It was it was really admirable. I thought I thought same thing with with you know yesterday afternoon. Cantley was was stones. Um, so you know, hats off there. Uh, or or you know yeah. what, guys, hats hats on there. Mm. That there you one. go. Um, <laughs> can, I, can I drop a little stat on you, TC? Like again, there's a lot of noise in the strokes gain data for match play and small sample size, and it, I think the more the noise is towards the downside of like 
yeah, you might try to pull off a hero shot and in match play, if you yeah. don't execute it, like it's just going to give you a ridiculous number. But if on the positive side, there's not a lot of noise. Like if you did something really well, like that's the whole point is like yeah. match play begets. It's suggesting or requesting aggressive play and awesome achievement. Uh, Justin Rose, number one putter uh, total this week at almost five strokes gained on the greens in his three matches. Like that was, yeah, it, Sala, that, you were, you were copping some stick from people of, about, you know, I think DJ kind of pointed it out yesterday too, about citing strokes gained and for, in foursomes, especially <laughs> it was oh, tough. I, I literally said this yesterday, the same exact thing. Like there's a bunch of noise in these numbers. Like don't yeah. necessarily look too deep into them. I think something else, I mean, we'll get to it, but like the, the, you know, down the stretch with, with Rom, like Rom's a beast. Like that was, it was pure, oh. like, just in, in Scotty, props to Scotty um, for picking himself up off the mat, especially after some shorties missed this morning and, you know, picked himself and up Brooks off the mat. Too. And yeah. And, but, but like that Scotty Rom match, like that was the best of golf. That was awesome. It yeah. was, it was, it was the best of sports. It was two guys going at it, mutual respect and, and throwing haymakers at each other and withstanding the punches. And then, you know, I don't know what happened like, with that. like through, yeah, through that, sheer force of will. You know, <laughs> I don't know what happened with that Scotty chip on eighteen. I don't know if that lie was. It was a. I think it was atrocious. a bad lie. It, it yeah. had to be because that thing was yeah. screaming mm. past yeah. the hole. And then, and then also, like I thought, one of the highlights of the day was like Max. You know, oh, Max man. taking the unplayable, like Joe calling him off that, taking the unplayable, and then you know, getting that up and down, just like he did, I guess, earlier in the round two, he took another unplayable. And it's like, that's, I don't know. Like, I, I love seeing what this thing means to Max. And Max is who we thought, who, who we thought he was, who we hoped he was. Like, he's, he loves the moment. He loves this shit. It's, it's, there's no, like, it's the most authentic sort of love and performance of like, man, like he just absolutely cares so deeply in it and it's it's really really cool to see and i know that sounds corny as hell but like it's you can't fake that man it's just it's truly in his heart well what i think so fun about max is he does love that moment and he loves big celebrations and he loves all the pressure being on and do or die moments and all these things and just to be candid like his results in those moments have been very mixed right like he he missed the cut at lacc he, of majors yeah, yeah you know what i mean i just i mean in like really really big moments he, he sticks say, in, in in tournaments he's in contention it's not because he wins right way like a ton when he's in contention but yeah it, it it's been great to see like the major thing is obviously i think weighed on him really heavily and i just think the more of these team moments these like really really big things he can stack up the more that ledger kind of starts to get heavy on the on the right side you know what I mean? And, and hopefully it carries into the majors next year and, and other, other stuff. Cause he's I, I, TC, I I'm with you. And like, I, I know how corny this stuff sounds, but like our, our guys, the fucking point lead points getter for the American team at the Ryder cup. Like the, he's, he's the guy on the American team. That's fucking awesome. He went all five <laughs> as a rookie. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He went out. Yeah. Went all five matches, only winning record on the team. Like that's fucking yeah. insane. And, man. And, and he won a foursomes match. Yeah. <laughs> Which is quite difficult to do. We're we're gonna get into grades for everyone. I, I think if we uh, we went through a few of the matches there, it's Scotty and Rom. I hope we get that in every Ryder Cup. That'd be oh. just awesome. Like I wish there was some chippiness between them. They just seem to they seem to get along totally fine. I wish there was some hostility and some Reed Rory, Rory stuff going on. But uh, I, that's such a treat. Hovland, I, I call I put the call out for Morikawa. I was like, hey, I, look, you got two majors. Like, you're not trading Hovland's resume for that right now, but like. Hovland flew past you this year as a golfer. Like Hovland made the leap and Morikawa just hasn't made the leap. No kind of consistency. And uh, Hovland just completely outclassed him four and three. And he was never a threat in that match. And I just found that there's telling. no grit. I, there's no grit with Colin. Yeah. It was like, it was like watching a small boy out there against Hovland. Like it was his hair. His hair looked great. Yeah. I think he was dying for someone to ask him about it in the in the press conference. His hair looked great, and Joe's hair looked great too. Joe Griner. Joe Griner's hair looked, looked great. <laughs> he too. was hatless yeah. today, and he looked fucking resplendent. Uh, as as mentioned, Cantlay beat Rose two and one. Um, Rory went out and beat Sam Burns. Like uh, I, you know, only question really last night was Burns has only played two matches. Rory's played four. 
Rory gets his fourth win, first time he's ever done that, I think, uh, in a Ryder Cup. Uh, disposed of him three and one. Uh, that was impressive. Homa beat Fitzpatrick one up, uh, as mentioned. Tyrrell made it interesting. <laughs> Yeah, made it interesting. interesting coming down the we, we do got to shout out the the, the T ball yeah. at sixteen. I don't know what happened <laughs> there, uh, but you know we got the, fly the banner, man. We got the we got the W. Um, Tyrrell Hatton uh, beat Brian Harmon three and two. That was a critical one. I mean, look, yeah. it doesn't end up being critical when the gap is five points at the end, but um, there was like some windows in there, yeah. felt, like true windows Hell of yeah. hope for the U.S. It was I don't know when you can get matches down to tide and one down and you need to just like flip one or two of them or three of they need to three of them at, a, at certain points it became very clear it was like okay Harmon, you're two down and you need to flip this back to a tie and he just never put up much of a threat and he lost three and two and uh that was a bit of a bummer but uh um, hadn't should have gotten good the to, uh the uh nicholas jacklin award Ah, Team Rose was yeah. a, he was that a was runaway Rose. winner, man. That was it's just so class. That was my have of the week. If I That's went true. 0 4 and 1, That's what I'm saying. my have was uh, calling uh, Team Rose as exactly. the, uh, Nicholas Jack. You, you you know that means the world to him. Like that's going to be right. up there with like his uh his, his Olympic you know, medal, US Open trophy and his Olympic medal. <laughs> but, uh, 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 he needs to win a you never won a Kodak challenge though. I don't think TC, not that I know of. <laughs> I did hedge it by saying they might give it to Sevy, and it turns out they did uh they did give it to Justin Rose. But you know what? Um, it should be the uh if, if you win if you win the Aeon Risk Reward Challenge and and the and the uh Nicholas oh. Jacklin award in the same year, like that's that's basically like winning the triple crown in baseball, you know. I mean it's, <laughs> it's some big shit. That's heady territory. Yeah, it's hard to take that Throw many paint, risks. Paint Stewart Award in there too. Um, Brooks <laughs> Kepka de <laughs> defeated Ludwig uh, three and two. Um, once Brooks get rid of his stupid teammates, he can go out and win a win a match in the Ryder Cup. Uh, Justin Thomas beat Sepp Straka two up. That was a big one for your boy. That was going to be an apology bet uh, on that one. Um, I'm sorry, I let uh, KVV leave before that apology. But um, Xander beat Hoygaard three and two. Um, that was again, a, a no win situation for Xander. You could only lose a lot of people's respect probably in that match. Um, it was already decided really when we got to this point, cause, uh, in, in match 10, um, Jordan Spieth ended up having Shane Lowry by winning the last hole. Um, some really a great putt by Spieth on 15 to like open up one final window of hope, uh, only to have Shane pour in a big putt on 17. Um, uh, but, uh, then Tommy Fleetwood defeated Ricky after, three a, after a bad, a bad tee shot on 17 from Shane to miss that, left. bad yeah. tee shot on 17. Yeah. And then Spieth missed left again. Um, it was a pretty tough scene, but uh, Fleetwood defeated Ricky three and one some fight in Ricky today. I mean, Fleetwood made a lot of birdies. Uh, if, if Ricky sat since Friday morning, it's a long time to sit. Um, I had zero confidence in Ricky in this match. He played better than I thought he would, um, but a tough Oh, and two. And we're, we'll talk captain's picks on the back end, but I mean, Fleetwood Tommy, gets, Tommy threw the, kitchen sink at him from yeah you know eight through 12 like just yep. put his foot on the gas uh and in the final match big shot bob defeated wyndham clark uh two and one to cap off an undefeated two oh and one week um to the shock of the shock of many including including yourself tc if we may say we did not see that one coming and uh yeah, I, listen again, i apologize to the obanites my my message was delivered last night loud and clear uh you tc know. i test it, it it wasn't it the bob did not play very well he was a liability uh it is one of those match play things that uh somebody that was rooting for the americans was just kind of like yeah that that seems about right play poorly and end up 2-0-1 but uh what a i mean who knows maybe he'll maybe he'll play another one maybe he won't if he does if he never plays another one leave, leaves as an undefeated rider cupper from from oban i mean fuck man that's that's legendary stuff, TC. Made um, made made a bunch of birdies today. I mean, hats off to him. You know, he missed that shorty. Um, I I don't know. I, I just can't get away from the thought of like whether it was Wyndham's shot. I think it was yesterday when he blew it way right. You know, coming on the session eighteen. I can't get over like every time I watch Wyndham, I'm like, this guy would be so fucked with like non non like twenty twenty three equipment. Like, like big, big club face and like, you know, ball that doesn't spin a whole lot. It's like, man, this guy, you put him back to like 1996 and Wyndham's not cracking the top 200. 
Yeah, I don't I, I don't think I disagree with that. Um, before we get to uh, grades, if you guys would like to do that next, uh, you all know Roback. You see it. I'm wearing it right now. These guys understand quality. I feel like I couldn't go anywhere without there. No joke. I think I've come down with whatever was uh, was affecting the U.S. team. Really, really <laughs> which, so which so Solly, we didn't hear a whole lot about that yesterday and today. You know, didn't hear a whole lot. It just magic. They, they bounced back on antibiotics. You heard that. You magic did hear about of that. antibiotics. That was addressed. That was addressed. I did talk to two people who got whatever that was as well, and they're like, "Oh, that that was that was very real. It was good. It was a short short fatigue session, but we're good." Guys, Anyways, were you guys only, seeing a lot of the subtle dog? I do the there? ad read. Yes, <laughs> thank yeah, you. We couldn't go anywhere, TC, okay. without seeing it. <laughs> There's only one way to describe Roback: best fit, best feel. Uh, summer is coming to a close, it, but it's still time to load up on performance polos. Uh, as mentioned, I think earlier in the week there might be a discount on the USA themed uh, after this performance this past week. I, I, that's not, actually not in the copy. Please do not count on that. But we'll give you a discount at the end of this ad read. Those colors are running. Classic stars and stri uh, solids and stripes. They're clean, four-way stretch, moist, moisture wicking fabric. Um, the performance hoodies are my absolute favorite. They're the stretchiest, softest hoodies in golf. If you want to be comfortable and relax on and off the golf course, no better way to do it than a rowback hoodie. TC, I can't wait to play some fall golf in Florida oh. in a hoodie. That just that gets me really excited. So uh, let's let's the, go out and play some golf together wearing matching hoodies. It's in Florida. it's. Finally, golf season, man. It's been a long summer, and uh, we need to get through this Ryder Cup. But uh, performance Q-zips are a game changer. Nothing beats rocking a Q-zip for an early round of golf. We cannot go anywhere, including Rome, Italy, even walking the streets uh, of Rome uh, without spying the subtle dog logo or the two-stripe bridge in the back. Use code NLU at Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first order through the end of this week. That's R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, 20% off polos, Q-zips, hoodies, and more with code NLU. Guys, any, real quick, any other... I, I, I want to make light of this, too. Rory <laughs> at Whistling Straits, 2021. Xander's 3-0. and They send him out first in singles, and Rory beats him 3-2 and like a drum. I think that's who Xander is. Okay. Uh, thank you, TC. <laughs> um, you guys want to do grades? Uh, it's a, a, a tradition we've done. I don't know, maybe just we did it last year the president's cup but grades on each each person's each player's uh sure. individual performance classes uh, in session yeah we'll, we'll we'll start right at the top uh in the order that cody put him in the agenda here ludwig let's just i'm gonna go with a bird because i heard 25 different ways this this week and i don't know if any Obear. of them are right but Obear. two and two record Obear. tc uh as i don't know if it's if you need to recuse yourself kind of like uh you know chris fowler when he's calling a game he can't make a pick <laughs> On uh, on college game day, as you are related to Ludwig, I don't know if you can make a pick here, a call here for his grade, but what do you give him? Yeah, no, I think I, I'll give him a B minus. I think uh, you know didn't didn't bring it yesterday afternoon. Um, it was a tall ask today. Like the guy was playing college golf, what four months ago, five months ago, and he's going up against five time major winner and current defending PGA. And, and champion and you guys are all a disgrace if you didn't see that coming right if you, if you did not <laughs> no, call no. that you're all but disgraces. i think he i think I'll he held his on, own I'm today trying. he fought hold on and then but like i think people are too quick to d diminish his performance yesterday of like oh yeah like he's playing with vic like he's hitting a lot of the fucking p shots i mean he's putting vic in the middle of the fairway in spots ludwig's irons were off all week as they have been pretty frequently this this late summer early fall um, which we'll get that figured out, but I think, I don't think, you know, like, I, I think he acquitted himself. Well, the moment wasn't too big for him. Um, his game was a little bit, you know, out of sorts in spots, but I would give him a B minus. He was, he was overall, he was an asset. He played four sessions as a rookie, which is impressive in and of itself. I, I'm going to explain my grading scale for this. I am more heavily weighting early wins in this contest. Like this thing was decided. I, I think early matches, are a driver of a lot of energy in these things right and he was a tone setter early on so he went two and two that that would you know suggest a, a pretty average grade I'm, I'm like between a b plus and a b though because like his wins were early and they were decisive if there was any chance for a comeback um in in the foursomes they had the biggest possible win they could have at nine and seven against the number one player in the world and a five-time major champ so uh Thank strong you, that's to fucking mature of you <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've never believed in him, and I think that the, the tape definitely reflects that. As we've uh, it hit him, it hit him it. today. I, could I just see saw it his, his hair turn gray. He said, "I, I believe now. Yeah. I believe it." Love. He saw. Yeah. He saw how tall he was standing next to Brooks. How much of a fucking a unit. unit he is. 
Um, so His yeah, quads are huge. He's got some trunks, TC. So uh, this is gonna take a while. So we're gonna move a little bit through that. But what's your love? No, I don't have much to add. B, Great. I think yep. B for me. Uh, unbelievably, uh, unbelievable energy. The the, U, the Euro team and the crowd were feeding on like, who's that? The oh, that's the rookie. That's the rook. That's the kid. Basically, it was kind of the energy out there. And that's not nothing to come out and back it up because he could have laid a fucking egg in that first session. And then it's I'm 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 rambling. I'm with you. Uh, we'll do a snake draft here. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick, one and two. Uh, I'll say a C plus. Okay. Because gonna, of your I'm gonna what go you said early wins. Yeah. That that was a tone setter on Friday. B minus because that there was some momentum in that afternoon for the u.s and they he carried rory in that one and then and he played two after that but. played the u.s's best player in singles yeah. as well tc uh i'll go i'll go b because i think he's still it's disappointing with the singles but also i think he gave max a really really good match he missed some putts down the stretch but he also like that eagle he had early on on six like he threw the kitchen sink at max through the middle of that stretch and then max answered the bell and everything um i don't think we've seen the best golf from from fits yet in, in a Ryder cup and i think the best is yet to come so but i think he laid a big foundation for that moving forward um next up is uh, another one of tc's boys tommy fleetwood three and one tc i give him an a plus no i will knows. say i will say a minus for uh the poor afternoon um uh, yesterday that's it. Second. I'm, I'm with you. Absolute, like, not the biggest world ranking, not the, you know, biggest number of majors, obviously, but uh, heart and soul of that yeah. squad, man. Like, he's the, he's the dude that they, he says jump and they say how high into what body of water. Tyrrell Hatton, back at you. Uh, a. A for Tyrrell Hatton. Uh, I would say A plus. I mean, the guy went out and did it. He was 3 0 and 1. He, Paired with Rom the first two days, matched his energy, put him in spots to succeed. I think it's also telling, like, Donald sent him out. You know, Donald sent Hatton. And, like, you know, I know Randy was expressing some concern about what happens after these early dogs go out, uh, you know, after these first six. And I think having having these guys kind of in that middle stretch, having Fleetwood, knowing that he's going to step up to the plate, I think was was a huge benefit for Team Europe today. So, uh, Fleetwood and Hatton, both A pluses. Uh, Nikolai Hoygaard, TC. Uh, o two, I'll o give, two and one for the listeners. Yeah, I'll give Nikolai. Again, I think I don't know. Like, what's so from a from a session perspective? What was his? Where he was where solid was that with one. It was he was solid ball, with, Rom, right? with Rom and four ball. Rom was very yeah. much shepherding him around, and I think he looked a little like a rookie, and he looked pretty lost at times, but still acquitted himself well. Hold some big putts, hit some good shots. I think, I think, just way outmatched by the time he got to yeah. singles. I think I'm not. If you're gonna look for like a kind of, you know, this is no shot at him, and maybe he was bigger behind the scenes or something like that, but probably the the most replaceable guy on the Euro team, I would say. Guy, it feels like Moran could have come in and exactly like, been the same guy, right? But I th he was fine. He's a rookie, first one, probably yeah. very overwhelming. I, I would say C minus, maybe as a rookie. I, I would I would say a D. I mean, he was he was the weakest link probably on their team. Um, it, you know, there's it, he did have the what would Sevy do quote that allowed Rom to hold that hold that putt. That's true. He was. People forget that. Pump, might have pumped Rom up too much. Exactly. That ball was going way by. Um, I think this was an investment 22. in the future. Yeah, he's exactly. 22. Like, and also, a special shout out. We may have mentioned this. Fucking awesome that Rasmus was out there driving carts. I thought more and more about that today and, and more hyped and ramped up than ever about this idea that the U.S. needs to have. Like, you want to start building a culture? Get some other guys there. Get some other guys driving carts that are not just Stricker and Furick and Fred Couples. And Stuart Sink, I think, is fine. He'll probably be a captain in the future. But uh, mix it up, man. Get get some young guys out there. And some other uh, guys that are that are going to be playing in this thing that's in the what future. I'm saying. Yeah. Right? And like, and like, yes. like Rasmus and Nikolai going out as a, as a four-ball tandem at some point. And yeah. and just making yeah. all the birdies. That's going to be fucking sick. Like they're, but I, I guarantee you, both of them are fantastic fits for beth page fantastic i think they should 
yeah. both uh they should play a four ball session but flop balls like they should no, but see if anybody notices <laughs> that they, they play each other's ball but uh victor hovland three one and one uh a plus I know he got drummed in that session when it really didn't matter and the result was pretty much not in question uh, anymore. Maybe they flew a little close to the sun, sending Vic, him and Ludwig back out for that that second session on uh, Friday or Saturday. Yeah, Saturday afternoon. Uh, he's the dude. I mean, he yeah. was fucking amazing. He played amazing golf and took a massive leap. I'll go A for Hovland. Uh, I'll go valedictorian. Yeah, he was he was taking AP classes. He he got a <laughs> he got a five point two grade point average. <laughs> <laughs> we got grade inflation going on over here. Shane Lowry one one and one TZ. Uh, I'll give Shane a B plus. I think Shane he had some haters coming in. People questioning why he was on the team, and and I, I think he answered it both with his play, just in general, and just his general like he's he's turned into uh you know the guy in the team room i think as well like he's he's the beating heart of that team i would say he's similar to like a max or somebody like that it's he's a very very integral part of that team and and i think even if he doesn't make the squad he will be at the next 10 rider cups i'm gonna go b for shane i'd say b minus on play and b for just being involved in literally everything extracurricular possible in every possible situation breaking up fights leading cheers and just being in every time a camera was around Shane was to be found. Uh, I'll say, I don't think he played very well. I'll say C, C minus, but I, he's kind of like that kid that like, you're just happy to see him get the grades. Like he's moving on. He's going to graduate, man. Everyone's really hyped for him. At the uh, next level, he might do a lot better. Exactly. <laughs> His career is not going to be defined by this grade. But. <laughs> um, Bob McIntyre, two Oh and one. I'm going to say, I'll say a man. I mean, that that's very, very impressive. I, I, consider, uh, consider, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna make go you go ahead. first here, TC, because I really don't know what to do here. Uh, Bob took the class on a pass fail basis. He, <laughs> he gets a he gets a pass. He gets I'll a satisfactory that. grade. That. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, Rodrigo McElroy, four and one. I am going A plus. A plus. I would say A plus, and I think I don't think people realize like having talked to some guys in the your team room last night i don't think people realize like how much that spat with fuckwit joe lacava last night totally galvanized that team and, and basically flipped the mo back to like hey we're gonna go you know what like let's finish the job here we've we've played well today and let's let's go step on their throats I think, to and some, then and then for Zinger to, to like basically say that Rory wasn't going to show up this morning and or, or 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 come out flat, like we'll get to Zinger, but I mean, just the guy answered the bell, and and you know Sam Burns didn't stand a chance today, and and Deej, I, I thought you had a great point last night. It's easy to get up for like one of the best players in the world. It's tougher to get up to go play Sam Burns, and he did it. Yeah, uh, I think a couple talking to a couple of writers who were out there who talked to Rory after his round today would not believe like how fired up he still is about about that and he seemed to have calmed down a little bit by the press conference but he was like telling people he was thinking about going into the u.s team room last night he like he could not it turns out he was yelling at bones he's like i've i kind of blacked out like bones just happened to be the first guy i saw and he he's like i texted bones and apologized because like that was not cool but uh yeah he was really amped up about it still which also when we did the show last night we were not privileged to uh, uh the other uh, the camera angle that came the out today, the which, high angle was can we, can we get the fedora damn. out for this one or no i'm not gonna fedora for this one i still i, I won't no 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 i said i'm staying with rory i i he was team rory but i still maintain that like rory was in charge of not escalating this into a, a big like Lacava was in the wrong. He did say in the press conference, "You got, you just gotta have thick skin in this Ryder Cup." And I was, I was like, like well, "You literally kind of the opposite." Of what. <laughs> he didn't have thick skin. No, in this I, one, I but. thought that was one of the most low rent moves I think I've ever seen from player or caddy. It was, it was, it was out there for a long gross. time. If it was player, it was I think it would have been totally fine. I, I, yeah. I really do. Rory has himself done outrageous celebrations on greens while guys still have a chance to putt. If it's a caddy, like. 
going out of his way in that long shot. It really, you're like, Oh my God, this goes on. Surely he's done. Oh, he's still walking that way. <laughs> Why is he doing this? You just don't ever do that. As you just don't do that. As you a just don't do that. I didn't realize how poor of a reputation he has amongst his peers too. It's yeah. It's jarring. It was, it was tough. Um, uh, yeah. But anyways, um, John Rom two Oh and two, I'm going a, yeah, same. I think he's, he's up there with, with, Fleetwood and kind of a mix of Fleetwood and Hovland of just like the dude on the golf course and kind of like a heartbeat guy. Have his match chef shepherding Nikolai Hoygaard around like yeah. that is a win. Like the yeah. again, I go back to uh, a take. I'm not really that backing was what, off what like, harvested their souls that's, on Friday. Yeah, I'm not like backing off the take of like, hey, there was like a weak section of this Europe team that the U.S. had to take advantage of, and like Rom going out and playing with him and getting the half out of that, and then having with the number one player in the world in singles like. His record isn't jumping off the page, but he was an awesome, awesome asset, both in neutralizing good U.S. teams and winning two matches. Yeah, he's the heartbeat of this team. I mean, Luke said it. He said, hey, I'm going to rest you Saturday afternoon because I'm going to send you out first thing in singles because you, yeah. you are the guy and goes out, birdies the first hole, um, let his foot off the gas a little bit, just kind of some sloppiness there in the middle, and then, you know, closed strong birdie par birdie and um yeah i don't know he was in you know birdie 12 and 13 as well he just it was like even if he doesn't have his best stuff you can tell it's just sheer force of will the both the the dry like both the the long play but also the the hundred foot putts the the you know the long touchy chips like it's i don't think i've ever seen someone just with with that full compliment, that full array of like, you, you know, the guy's going to, going to hit the shot that, that, that situation dictates. It's amazing. Maybe it was, maybe it was just being there for only the second time watching a Ryder cup. I don't know how you'd ever quantify this, but somebody needs to illustrate just how good the quality of golf is at these events compared to even normal PJ tour events or majors or anything like sorry. There's what usually 16 balls in play at the most. And I, I swear to God, 25 people chipped in this week. It, all in 20, one team. Like 30 <laughs> people just all like stuffed tee shots at par threes. Guys are driving par four. It's match just, play. There are a million hundred foot putts hold. Like it, it was, I've, it was like video game golf out there. I've just shots that you're just like, oh, well, like, of course this would never go in, but it's probably going to go yep. in. And in they do. Event. It's, it, God, it was crazy. Deej, that's, amen. That's, that was my biggest takeaway today. It was just like the quality of golf. God, the golf was I mean, good. like in and and greenside shots out of weird oh. lies and bad, like bad angles and bad down slopes and all that. And like guys just finding on both sides, guys just finding a way to do it. Like it was it was truly it was truly world class. And and it was it was some of the best golf I've ever seen. Justin Rose, one, one, and one. I am going um I'm gonna go B plus. I'm gonna sneak to A minus. I thought you might. I think just God, he he. Considering he's at he's at the tail end of his Ryder Cup career. Back nine. I don't know what people were totally expecting from him. I think he was a force in the team room. Hold a bunch of massive putts. I think he's I think he's a big culture guy more than I realized. I, I was very impressed. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go A minus just because he won me over. I mean, that's that's uh, you know, I've. Went from last semester, I was accusing him of, of all sorts of malfeasance and bad stuff to this semester. <laughs> you should see his rate my professor review. That, that He's sitting in the left. front row and, and you know, coming in after class and we're hanging out. It's it's just what a turnaround. <laughs> uh, Team Rose, I'm, I'm a proud, proud member of Team Rose these days. On the Team United States side. Whoa, 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 whoa. Skip Sepp Straka. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Uh, Trying no, to move right. past that. I'm happy to. Sepp Straka uh, went one and two. I am going C minus. Uh, I'll say C. I'll say C. Just a little better than yours. <laughs> sure. <laughs> TC? I'll say, Sully, going back to, you're kind of getting away from your, your, your rubric, your scale here. Uh, I think Sepp went out with with, with Lowry yeah, and kind of big set match a tone. on day one, and I, I think that was big. Um, I think he, he did what was asked of him. I thought he played played hard today. Um, Speed actually played pretty well today. He played Speed today, right? That was the he did play or no, no, he played yeah. JT. Oh, JT. Okay, yeah, and like I don't know, it was just 
I thought I thought he acquitted himself well as a rookie, as someone who's kind of a you know, kind of a weird fit on the team. He's from Valdosta, Georgia. <laughs> he sounds like kind of, I know everybody kind said of a, that, but press conference is of, funny. It's kind of a true England or Alabama, you know, yeah. England or South Georgia scene, you know, you know, Austria or, uh, you know, the Georgia Plains scene. But um, no, I thought he was great. I thought, you know, one and one in foursomes um, took the L in singles today, but I thought the foursomes victory was a big, feather in his cap so i'll go b minus i uh i give credit to doing what you need to do like you win the match that you get some credit for that but also when the team was ricky and, and morikawa that threw up an absolute stinker like that that's factored into the grade as well and then losing the other two matches is for someone that was forced down my throat is someone i need to apologize for i will not be apologizing for sep uh going i don't think you need to apologize for him and then and then max and representing the united states of america sam burns and I wasn't sure. If, is that intentional, Cody? Are you trying to play that? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I click that? Uh, but rappers, are we switching over to, yeah. to the U.S.? Where you trying let's to play get into, Let's get into AP calculus here, should we? <laughs> Some tough grades going going out here. Sam Burns at one and two. Uh, say, I would give Sam Burns an F. I'll say D, just because he looked he looked good in that. Uh, what was that? That four sums match, four ball match, four ball in the afternoon. In the played afternoon, great. played really, really nice. So that, 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 that was like a forty. One of those like first tests of the semester, like forty eight percent, like not even close in that first match. I, I'm gonna go D plus. Like you, you're brought onto this team to play foursomes with Scotty. Like in that first session, we need you to not lay a gigantic egg, and he did. He did play fantastic uh, in the four ball with Colin Morikawa when they kind of out of it, but also just desperately needed it to stay someone in it. Hung decently tough with Rory, but was not a serious threat to beat him. Um, not what you're looking for out of the captain's picks, which we'll get to. It was not very productive. So I just think of that you, chunked three wood or five wood or whatever, like pulled chunk into the hazard. It's like, dude, like nine. We're, oh. we're, we're good, Sam. Like let's, <laughs> you know, and uh, listen, I thought he played pretty well today. I thought he, a couple putts fall and that's probably a, much different match like and, and they were good putts i just i'll give him a d minus f is f is a little bit uh yep. extreme patrick can't lay at two and two an interesting one. <laughs> i know an interesting he like one. skipped a bunch of classes it's so many but he, he's like he's a smart guy he, the final exam man like i don't know like he midterm not so good but the final exam he he was probably he, cheating off Sully, like he's not even showing his work it's not showing That's true. Work. That's true. It's just you. You call me on it. I fucking dare you. Uh, I I'm gonna say B minus. I would say the first day was was very very poor, but damn, he was very good coming down the stretch Saturday and Sunday against you know some some uh, a storm somewhat of his own making, but not entirely inside of his control. Uh, a lot of shit going on in his in his orbit out he, there, and he played really good golf. He turned in his, his assignments late. If he'd have got them all on time, I think it would have been like an A minus. Yeah, but a B minus for being a, just an asshole throughout all of this and and bringing up the one thing you really don't bring up in a, in a Ryder Cup. He carried Xander around a little bit uh, when they were playing together, um, and it turned into the U.S.'s best player by the end. I mean, it was some cold blooded stuff that happened Saturday afternoon. So he does get credit for that. Uh, but he did, he turned his assignments late. I got to take a little bit off. So B minus. Yeah, I would say if he doesn't do what he does the last 36 hours, and we're probably looking at 19 or 20 points for Europe, yeah. um, I'm going to give him a 1,200. He got an 800 on, on, on the math portion of, of the SAT, and he got a 400 on his verbal. Don't they, have new, don't they have new SAT scores? Isn't it like 2,400 now? Do I have that right? Something like so. that. Anyway, I don't take the SAT. Wyndham, one, one, and one. This is kind of an interesting one too, because he he did really good throughout the semester. Like he 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 was fine. He was engaged. He was pretty locked in. And then the final, once we got to eighteen, it just absolutely spit the bit twice. Just really botched the final exams. Uh, I'm gonna say like D plus, C minus D plus somewhere around there. It depends if yeah. you know if you're where you draw your line. Again, I, I know the messaging I'm giving you is confusing on the strokes gain data within this weird sample size, but at the same time, it's probably worth pointing out he was 24th of 24. Like, like 
that can't be an anomaly. Like that yeah. can't be like, oh, he was actually really good in the numbers now. Like that that's really bad. Uh, I am going D plus. Um, he had good time, a good windows. He had a, a four ball stretch where he made a ton of birdies. But um, yeah, to, to lose to Big Shot Bob in the final match, like that's a that's a big damage to your final grade. And and also, I mean, we talked about it, but flipping those matches on Friday or on, on yeah on Friday afternoon, yeah. coming down the stretch, probably the best drive I saw all week on 18 and shanking it from the, from the literally. middle, of the, like literally shanking it from. The, I know those are anomalies and there's some weird lies on that 18th fairway it's very uneven and there's ball below your feet and above your feet and whatever but uh you, I, you just can't do that just can't do that <laughs> you don't do that do you see yeah i'll give him a d i thought you know not not even being considered for foursomes as well like it just limits the interchangeability and, and the, the versatility of the lineup too to where hey this guy's only going to play foursomes and then to, you know, to 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 go out and kind of show up flat and get beat by Bob McIntyre in the in the anchor match today and get down big pretty early is is tough. Richard Fowler, zero and two. Why don't you start this one? I am going D minus at a bare like by one point passing because he did put up a fight against Tommy today. Yeah, but that, laid a complete kinda... egg in the first match and didn't play again. Um, and I had no confidence in him going into that match and had to get buried at the bottom of the lineup. Um, I feel like he had to be the, if there was an illness, he had to be the sickest guy, right? <laughs> Which again begets the ZJ question of well, why do you send him out for in the first session? Sure. And I don't, maybe he didn't have eight fully healthy guys at that point, but I, I don't know, man. It, it was not good. And um, Ricky, uh, Randy had a, a tweet thread, you, you know, he's saying three, nine, and two or something like that is his Ryder Cup. Or three, nine, and five is his Ryder Cup record. He's been on four losing teams. Yeah, I think we're probably good. Can't cross Europe with him again. Everything in my head was like, to, uh, in my gut was telling me that. And I talked myself out of it going into this. And I don't know why I don't have a good explanation. That is a regret I have. Um, and I will apologize for that because I could see it coming. And I still said, like, Ricky should be on the team. Yeah. And that was. So I got to I got to reevaluate my own process too. I I also want to say TC I've I've seen many many complaints. I had no problem with the concession. I didn't uh, either on, on 16. It was I don't know how long it looked on TV. I was standing right there. I was very very close to the green. It was not a long putt. It was If anything it would have would have been weird to make him putt it. It was kind of self-interested too. Like he, you know, he he, he probably would have missed the putt. <laughs> so. Well, it it the, the hard part is like the the too nice Ricky thing is it was the the one guy that you're like really Ricky like we're yeah. we're waiting for you to step on somebody's throat and to, I don't know it is sure. Brian Harmon two and two I didn't see. give Ricky a, a uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry I'll give Ricky I'll give Ricky a he just like Ricky needs to come back and take the class again and like maybe go do it at the President's Cup or something because he just he needs to go to technical college he got maybe. sick yeah. and. You know, he just wasn't. He just wasn't like those, qualified. It's yeah. like those kids that get mono and they miss like six weeks. Exactly. You know, and yeah. it's like, I, I, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed <laughs> to give you a grade? Like you, you weren't here. We got to just do it again. It's an incomplete. Um, Brian Harmon, two and two. Uh, I'm gonna say C minus. I think there were flashes. Uh, he. I mean, he went. He went two and two with Max. Or at two and zero with Max on Saturday. Saturday. I, he was a lot of that was Max. Max played really freaking good. He was good in one of the sessions, he and he he showed some life in foursomes in that morning session. Just not who you needed him to be, man. Yep. My my thinking coming in, and I I already apologized for this. I already pre-apologized the other night, but my thinking coming in, and TC, I know you're with me, was like he's going to hit driver everywhere. He's going to be short of all these hazards. He's going to hit every fairway. He's going to make a million heartbreaking we'll chip in. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I just didn't do any of that, man. Yeah. It just didn't Bottom. didn't get it going. I don't know if it was. I don't know what it was, uh, but I was disappointing. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say C. I mean, I again, I I accepted apologies. I think on Friday night's show, in terms of I, I raised a lot of doubt after he was basically put on the team for following the Open Championship. Took a lot of very unfair attacks from a lot of different people. Uh, I don't feel justified or wrong on it. More justified than I do wrong because he just. Again, the record looks pretty at the end of it, but um, the contribution to the team was not strong enough. He had one good session out of four. In there. It's not good enough. Yeah, I would say D D plus. He um, 
you know, it just and like it's not like that was a huge ask today. Like going up against Hatton, it's not like somebody that's out driving him by fifty yards. Yeah, and he just he got outplayed, plain and simple. And like you said, Deej, none of that magic that we were hoping for was there. Um, you know, granted, like he's not a he's not one of the thoroughbreds. Like everything has to go right for him to you know to kind of, but it just didn't feel like that gritty kind of rider cuff. Also, guys, I'm just receiving word. Um, Pat Cantley uh, cheated on his SAT, uh, and he is he has been the 1200 score has been thrown out because they were two and a half holes behind at, at one point today. <laughs> it was disgusting. Like truly, it was fucking bad. Uh, Max, I mean, you got to take it in. The, it's a time test. You exactly, know? you got to take test. it in the in the in the <laughs> allotted time. Yeah, you, you know? can. T- you can't take a week to take the test. That that's not the point. Max Homa three one and one TC. Uh, I'll give Max an A, man. I mean, it's it's. I know it's a more wow, victory to get back for him and everything. Yeah, I know that had no, to be I mean, yeah. He's, no, he's, I'm sure you see that. You know, like that that was one of the highlights of like the whole week was just like seeing him rise to the challenge. Uh, you know, today and and it just seems like man, they like the U.S. needs like six more Max Homas. So yeah. It's it's wild how that works. I think after if we did this pod five years ago, it was like, yeah, US needs like six more JTs, and we'll get to that grade here shortly. But uh A for Max Homa could be an A plus. The the foursome's opening was Harmon really was an anchor to him, but he was not great, not terrible in that. Um, that was his only loss, but three one and one went all five sessions for the US, did uh, almost everything he needed to. If he makes the putt on 18 uh in the Friday afternoon four ball, uh, I think he probably gets an A plus from me, but awesome, awesome rider cup. Uh, very lucky to have him on Team USA. Here, here. He actually Nothing lost to strokes today in singles, which was surprising. Did you give him great? I, I I say solid A, ninety six percent. I got nothing to I got nothing to add with you guys. Very, 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 very cool week to be able to watch. Brooks Kipka. <sighs> kind of a weird one. C, 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 C minus. It was good today. Good to see him bounce back. I I can't fathom. I just I keep calling it like the invasion of the body snatchers in some of these sessions, man. I just I can't wrap my head around him and Scotty playing that freaking bad. And I, I know golf's like that for normal people. Sometimes, you know, you get out of out of sorts and you get going down the wrong side of the hill and it's impossible to turn the car around. But uh God, that was really, really bad. And I just the fact that both of them bounced back today and played really good in singles is even more confounding somehow. Oh, no. You know, and so I, I don't know. I, I liked, I, he has grown on me more and more. The more I hear him talk, I know he doesn't talk a lot on this, you know, at this event, but I, I really enjoy, uh, see, watching his career evolve. Even if I, he does a lot of things I don't agree with, I, I find him more and more interesting each day. That's not a good answer, but I'll, I'll say C. I don't know. Who cares? C minus. I'm, I'm going D. Um, again, grading from the early performances. Uh, he was not, very good um, in the four ball afternoon on Friday and then was epically bad uh, Saturday morning. Won the match against Ludwig. We, you know, kind of late in the, late in the, you know, again, turned in the homework late. We needed a lot more out of somebody that won a major to get on this team. And, uh, you know, I know he was a captain's pick, but that's basically why he was considered and decidedly not major championship killer for him. Not him. Yeah, I thought looking at it like him and Scotty getting a have against Rom and you know arguably the weakest rookie and the weakest player on either team was tough um granted he did make some you know some plays down the stretch in that match for me it comes back to a the nine and seven debacle and that like shows some fucking pride and then b like the fact that friday morning he's not out there like the yeah. fact that for whatever reason zach said i'm not sending brooks out and my in my first eight, my, my, like my tone setters on, on, on Friday morning to go out and, and kind of establish the pace and establish the environment. And, you know, he's, he beat Ludwig today, but to me, like the die was already cast by, you know, Saturday midday. So yeah. I'll, I'll say D I'll say D plus. Colin Morikawa one and three TC. Uh, I would give Colin an F. It's. I think he he got absolutely pantsed, both today, and just just generally speaking. I mean, it's just like 
dog like that that wasn't it man i mean it it i just like like i don't know what to say i know like you know he went out first or went out first session lost to shane and sep like ricky and colin need to go out and beat those guys like that's part of the problem with the foursomes is like colin you're top 10 player in the world top five player in the world like go 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 play like it go go act like it and then and then he gets boat raced saturday or you know, friday afternoon it, it's just i don't know it's unbecoming and then he sits for 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 saturday foursomes and then and then they kind of you know salvage something saturday afternoon but to me it all comes down to sunday singles for him it's like you know you started poorly and you ended really really poorly and at no point did did it seem like you were even going to have a chance in that match I'm between D and D minus. Um, I think I am going to go D just because that it, that was like a clicking moment between him and Burns of like, dude, that's exactly how you play four ball. That was a great session. Like you did a strong contribution to the team. Granted, it was too late or else I may weigh it, he, weigh it more heavily. I'm going to go D minus as I say it because uh, every time he was needed, it was almost, it was it wasn't good enough. It, it, they needed a lot more out of him. Yeah, D minus. If you if you got a point on the board, I don't think I can give you an F, but I would love to. I can literally feel the sickness hitting me as we finish the show. Hell so yeah. it's going to be a final 30, 45 minute uh, battle here, however much time we have left. But uh, Xander Shoffley to you. Uh, I I would run back everything we just said about yep. Morikawa. D minus. Same D minus. Got to win in the final, you know, over Hoy Guy to, to at least make a contribution, but um, was a waste otherwise. DZ. Yeah, I would say. I think you know I'm I'm gonna upgrade the 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 grades have come back. I've been too hard on the class. I need to get some A's and B's and C's on the board. So I'm I'm upgrading Colin to a D minus, and Xander gets an F. Period. Point blank. <laughs> like it's it was. I think he's he should get as much or even more flack as Patrick. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, O oh, two and two. D plus. Maybe I think he battled back today and played a really nice match with Rom, but was very, very, very bad uh, in a lot of the other matches. I'll go D plus. That works. Yeah, I'll go D plus as well. I think he's he's very much a uh, like he kind of failed the midterm and then he came and it was like, dude, like you got to You got to fucking study. You got to come prepared to class. And then he he worked hard the last month of the semester and he came yeah. strong. But it's like, dude, like you're you're the he like right now he's the number one player in the world, right? Yeah. And and like you can't do that. No. You just can't you just can't do that. You don't do that. I, you get you get big points for me, honestly, like it's close to an F, but for be, for having with John Rom and the yeah. singles on the road. Yeah. Like that's that was that's big that was that. courageous, I thought. Like that was and especially after some early miss pots. Is there any similarities to Scotty Sheffer this year to Rory in twenty one? No, because Rory had a stinky year. Like it just was just so meh that kind of most of that year. Scotty really did have a brilliant year. I know he didn't have the wins to match it, but um, I, I would say more like Jordan's week and Rory last year. Yeah. yeah. Jordan fucking stunk, man. Jordan Spieth, 0 2 and 2. So Scotty, real quick, like the, like all the changes that he's made to his putting as well aren't like that stuff's not ready for prime time. Right, like he needs a full off season to kind of ingrain that stuff, and like he's kind of yeah. changing on the fly here with 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 Phil Kenyon and all that. So it's it's like, hey, we're bound to see some some flaws in that, right? Yeah. Last two, plenty of discussion to be had about both of these two. <laughs> uh, Jordan Spieth, O two and two, Tron. Uh, I would give Jordan a D. I mean, it you know, it was. It was tough. He's gotta I think worse, he's got to get a worse grade than Cantlay or than uh, Morikawa and Xander. They they had a win on the board. Yeah, I mean a win, but two, you know, like Spieth and Thomas went out first first guys out in Friday afternoon four ball, and played Hovland and Hatton to a to a draw. I think there's yeah. something to be said for that when the when the you know to kind of staunch the bleeding after an zero and four morning and, start and that was the 35 footer that hovland made on 18 to for them to not win that match God, that was a good putt. <laughs> yeah and then they went out against 
like Rory and Tommy and, you know, lost on Saturday morning, but like at least they, like they won a lot of holes in that match. And then, let me stop. Let, know, let me stop you there. He was awful Saturday morning. For he sports. was. Like, it was, he was really bad. Um, so he was, yeah, this, he just didn't have it all week. No, brings yeah. me no joy, but yeah, biggest anchor on the team, right? I, I have to give Jordan a failing grade. Yeah. Here. I, I have to fail him. It brings me no joy. I mean, uh, heck of a basketball player too. That's what's tough. <laughs> he, uh, he, but he's not going to learn if, from it. If you he know? was, I can't just wave him through. If if he, yeah, you're going to miss the, you're going to miss the game against Central on Friday. I'm if, sorry, I don't know what to tell you. If he was averaging 18 a game, I would, I would find a way to <laughs> score him. Uh, you know, throw a couple points in there. But uh, I mean, the, these last two guys, we were asking you to, you know, they've not played their best golf. Uh, they have a specific role on this team. Like you're supposed to be the leaders of this team. You're going to be captain's picks. You're going to be heavily scrutinized. Like uh, you're going to cause a lot of flack for the captain as well for the picks in in hindsight, both because people were questioning them up front and are certainly questioning them now. It was a failure this year for the first time in any team event that they've been in together. Uh, they did not pass the test. Um, I think I have a different grade probably for JT, but slightly because um, speed was that much worse than the foursomes. But I he gave you almost nothing. Um, what did you give Scotty grade wise? T plus. So you're going to fail Jordan for going 0-2-2, two two, going to a draw in his singles match, and battling a little bit while Scotty went out with Brooks and went and lost 9-7. and seven. I said I got got curve points for having a match with Rom for, for, for Scotty. And hey, he was not that bad in the foursomes with Sam Burns. Burns was that bad. That, that's where that comes from. And I'm kind of to the point with Jordan where, like, so you said it last night. He he had a baby. His wife didn't have, have a baby. He had a baby a few weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, like, maybe, like, at some point, Jordan just needs to recuse himself from this Ryder Cup. Like, hey, like, because he seems like kind of a momentum. Hey, I need to be playing well for the last 8, 12, 16 weeks to kind of, you know, parlay that into this thing. And that obviously couldn't happen, right? Some some late stuff coming across the wire, TC. I honestly I forgot about the baby part, and uh, there were some excused absences in there. I will give him a pass. He will he passed the class, but it's an overall D minus. And I think it's a it's a very real question of like, hey man, if you you know if your if your wife is going to be having a baby right before this thing, like, are you going to be ready to play? If the answer is yes, then you still have to come out and play. Um, it it you know if you go and play poorly, uh, it really hurts the team on the back end. Uh, it brings me no joy. I mean, it was. It's it's weird to be at a Ryder Cup and and have him uh, look like a liability, and that's what happened. Yeah, here here, I I agree. I'll say, I'll say D minus just because I'm a I'm a crooked grader, and you know I want I want my guy to pass. But it, it was not fun to watch. Justin Thomas one two and one the one victory coming today in singles over um, Sepp Straka. I mean, I think at least he showed he gave a fuck. Right? Yeah, yeah. At, at, like, at a critical juncture when it felt like a lot of the other guys on the team didn't really care all that much or weren't going out and watching or weren't showing any fire. Like even after the LaCava thing, Justin's the first one in there saying, Hey, we got a chance. We got a chance. It's fucking nails on a chalkboard for me when he's out there doing the hat thing or <laughs> turning around after a chip. But like, that's why he's there. He served his purpose. He may not have played great golf, but like, I think, Justin was the least of their worries as far as captain's picks are concerned. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'll say D plus or C minus. I'm going to say D. I mean, it, it. he had some good stretches. He had, it, it's just so, like I, I said this the other night, but it's weird to see him and Spieth, um, like one plus one equaled like negative two instead of it being three. Like they just didn't have their yin and yang and zig and zag. And look, maybe it, like, again, I got to evaluate my own internal process. Maybe just expecting that magic to continue forever was not in the cards and not realistic. Um, but it just, it, it wasn't really, the putter really let him down. Uh, he did not make the putts he needed to make. And they hit bad putts. Uh, and, and I feel like I'm evaluating the two of them together. But a solid singles win and kind of he carried that four ball uh, in the afternoon on on Friday would carry the grade a little bit more than speed for me. But I don't know. I feel man, like he's got to get a better grade than speed. Right, he yeah. like he, yeah, he went out sure. and won his singles match. He carried Spieth at different points. Uh, I I just don't understand why you can't break those two up. 
as far as or like if just if Justin's on the team, then send him out in that first session. He's on the team for four for like foursomes, right? I I feel like it's a it's a bit of a like ride until it bucks, and I I think it bucked really hard in this session. I think Rose Rose uh, was it Rose that said that in the presser about what does it Needs mean to play on, real quick? What does it mean to play for Team Europe? And he was. Basically saying, like, you know, it, it means <laughs> Tacey's D rider jersey now <laughs> getting into the shot. <laughs> you know, it means uh playing with basically like playing with who the team who's best for the team, not with your buddies. Yeah. And I, I don't think he meant that as a hostile shot at Speeth and JT, but it's it's also hard not to take it as like a pretty obvious, you know, criticism of either that or Sam Burns and Scotty, or you know, just the way that the U.S. has kind of made some pairings over the years, but this is also just like the most rider. Like in Ryder Cups, you're just gonna you're gonna do some kind of post mortem look at this. Like, also imagine breaking up Jordan and, sure. and Justin that have had tremendous success, which together. is what I mean. Like, I it's just it, it. In order to do it, you kind of need to see some yeah. some negative negative data and see it see it not work. It, it we I definitely don't do a good job of this on the show of of like illustrating how. Um, how not not almost nothing is a constant in this thing like Roy McIlroy has been a Ryder Cup hero and baller and he's been a dud like yeah. he came into this with a 500 record like and it doesn't mean he he can he's going to come out and go 500 this week he went four and one this week he can be dominant you, there's a lot of really good Ryder Cuppers have had bad, bad Ryder Cups Ian Poulter has had bad Ryder Cups but um that's kind of where I'm at with the JT thing I rode really hard for him to be on the team uh, I, I know a lot of people have accused me of many malfeasance as it comes to that in terms of, of bias, but it was very much a, like, dude, if they're going to go over and win, it's probably going to be on the back of that guy playing a lot of really good golf. And you have to be okay with it not going well. This was, I, I didn't think this would happen, but I definitely, this was in the models. This, this could happen that he would not find his game and he and Jordan would not be a great pairing and you go out and lose. I, I don't, I still, I, I will, I will die on the hill that it's like, I don't think Keegan and Lucas Glover were solving this problem over over like JT and Spieth. I think you're you're kind of at the the mercy of Xander and Colin and Scotty and Jordan and Justin not combining to go three and twelve three twelve and one like over <laughs> toast like you're just not yeah. you're not doing anything with that like that's that's over that's it so I think your star wrote like rose to the occasion and and barked yep. loudly and then attacked people and us's dogs tried to bark and and got you know caught up by animal control i think on the i don't think we need to belabor the the captain's grades because i'm sure we're all pretty much on the same page but i think i'm giving luke donald an a plus and i'm giving zach johnson an a who the fuck cares a little bit <laughs> like uh man Incomplete. Like he, I, he, got, I just, he got expelled from school. It's just I don't I don't know. I don't mean this in the wrong way, I guess. But like I, I don't know who. I feel like you could have put anybody in that role. I don't know what he was bringing you specifically that anybody else wouldn't have. If, if his, his his wins above replacement, if it was a baseball stat, would not be a positive. It would right. be zero point zero at the absolute best. Like yeah. you are, what you just did is the most replaceable possible. Um, and. Yeah, I, I TC, I'm I'm totally with you on. Uh, again, a, an apology I will make on this was just assuming that the 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 system would hold up past the captain in terms of creating you know uh, the culture and the guys be, wanting to be in a room together and and all the leadership that came from the assistant captains and the continuity of all of that. I wanted to believe that it was a, a pretty replaceable role because honestly, I had I, I had apprehension about Stricker. And how he handled everything going into it, and I was wrong about that, which cooled my apprehension about ZJ, and I was wrong about that. So I, uh, uh, two wrongs don't make a right, of course, in this situation. Uh, so I will hat uh, hat off Fedora. That's big uh, of you. That. That's it's, big uh, of it's you. Tough. I don't know what he offered at all. Like literally, if you're not going to be like uh, forthcoming and charismatic and and a, a leader in the media, and you're not going to you know somehow create any kind of culture and 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 develop some good play from your team you provided absolutely nothing of value you didn't make glowing errors like you didn't do a watson and you didn't make like horrific mistakes you can point at and say like that was really fucking dumb um uh, but there's just enough adding up there that was like dude we there's no reason for this at all god the watson year was so sick we should do another pod about the watson year he just doesn't same score same score he just doesn't inspire any confidence right and it, it, it's None. it's just 
you know, it, and it's like, hey, man, like at some point, like leadership is getting, let's say the answer is getting more guys to play at Napa or getting more guys to, you know, you know we were talking about that trip. before, like before we came on, KVV was saying that before we came on, like turn Napa in, like this is exactly the kind of stuff that we're talking about, right? Is like, go turn Napa into your guys' own like rally and cry. It's like, I've, this is KVV's idea, but like, Go put up ten grand of your own money and just say like, "Hey, whoever finishes low, low man at Napa, is yeah. getting paid out of everybody else." Or you know spot. what? Like, like go, 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 go get everybody there. And make it your own. Like, don't wait for the tour to tell you you have to go do it. Like, just go fucking guys. Do how it. about this? How about this? How about like, like think about the the you know world championships for basketball or the Olympics or whatever. They go to training camp, right? Like, do a training camp. Bring in. The, 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 like the 12 dudes on the team and then 12 young dudes or scrimmage against the Walker cup team or something. And like hang out and do something original instead of just, you know what? Like this is, this is not how we would ever prepare for a major and take four or five weeks off. You know what? Like everything's going to be okay for the, like fix it instead of talking about God the layoff. And, and then Zach has the audacity to say, well, you know what? Rest is a good thing too. Well, you know what? Clearly it's not. And clearly like, you know, somebody said, well, yeah, like, like all those guys turned up for BMW and not only like, I, I think Jordan said it, it was like, it wasn't the fact that they turned up. It was the fact that all of them were in good form, but like the reason we knew they were in good form, Jordan was because they turned up and because they played the scrimmage against the Walker cups. My favorite idea I've ever heard. That's exactly the kind of stuff that's like, like this is what I was trying to say in the front end of the show is don't try to copy their homework and don't try yeah. to copy their culture and don't try to sing the same songs because you're not going to do that. That's not going to be a good fit. You have to come up with your own ideas. I, TC, I'm a thousand percent with you. I think that stuff's awesome. An awesome place it's just to crazy start, to me, too. It's going to take like, a really long time to yeah. get there. And like, but like, I think to me, it's like the task force. What is the task force accomplished? You've won a couple Ryder Cups on home soil, yet your fucking doors blown off in France. <laughs> <laughs> like you know it's like what's like like freddie couples for instance like freddie needs to move on i think it's like oh like freddie's super chill and he's cool and he's a big sports fan and everybody likes him in the team room cool like what purpose are you serving man it's like at some point i don't know i just don't under like basically that this entire tenure from zach felt like don't break it don't break yeah. what we have don't break what yeah i can't remember if it was rom or rory in the post round presser but they talked about their scouting trip the week uh the prior or the early week of wentworth and how they came and had such a good time i talked about the little fireplace scene earlier but then when they went to wentworth dp world tour specifically worked with them on their pairings yeah. so they were with the people who were there they're planning on playing together for at least two rounds there and they all made the cut they all contended that weekend like you guys hit the nail on the head they're like that's things that we could very easily do on the PGA Tour. For Napa, I think the scrimmage is an awesome, awesome uh, idea. But but ultimately, what it boils down to is like Luke's leadership style. He's he's very much a a like transformational leader. He talked about like him getting the reins only eighteen months ago, and them getting their absolute like you know head beat off at Whistling Straits, and knowing that he needed to change something, bringing in Eduardo bringing in the vice captains that he had and, and then like, listening to him, listening and explicitly and, and yeah. figuring out like them personally, like th it's weird because this is a lot of what uh, Suzanne Pedersen and her players said last week is like the leadership styles that they both had Luke and Suzanne were the exact same. And Zach brought like, he's the example of what is servant leadership. And that is trying to lay a blanket out for everybody Make sure everybody is coddled to do their best and just let them go and run. And that's okay if everybody's clipping at like 100 miles an hour. But if there's any sort of weakness in there and there's any weak link, it immediately falls apart. And that's what happened here. It, it's it's crazy. And you can't, you have to have a unique personality if that's the type of leader that you're going to be. And he's just, he's not the motivator. It What we're seeing uh you know, every year, not just European Ryder Cups, is the reflection of as much as I love to make fun of the Sevy stuff, like the reflection of like a dude that gave a ton of shit in this a long time ago, which 
created a bunch of other teammates that gave a shit, which those teammates uh, taught, uh, passed that along to the next teammates. Then all of those guys became captains and assistant captains. And then all of those next guys played for those assistant captains that get, had this give a shit culture and are buying into this thing. And it just keeps getting passed down. And the U.S. has none of that. They have to keep reinventing their process all the time because, like, yeah, 2010 was like Corey Pavin. And he's out there standing on the same hill that we are now taking photos. They lost, and he's out there taking photos with, with us now. And it's just not this, this like, winning, passed-along culture of, like, how the blueprint for how to do it. And, again, I, I thought it was going to be different this time. That's the clown makeup on my face. It's like, I thought the combination of talent and, like, at least an understanding of a process was going to be different, but uh, it just it just is not. Which is why I love that Walker Cup idea so much. Is like get just I, just stay with me in that like I think of I don't want to simplify it. No, but I'm saying like, I'm saying that's a perfect representation of like just conceptually. Get, yeah. get Gordon Sargent bought in right now and like yeah. the Walker or the Ryder Cup is the only fucking thing that matters. Get Nick Dunlap bought in on that. Get Caleb Surratt bought in on that. Get all those guys and just like man, I got to go when I made the Walker Cup team. First of all, I want to make the Walker Cup team because I need I get to go do this Ryder Cup thing. And then it is like, man, I played a singles match with Scotty Scheffler and I took him to the 18th hole and I was fucking 14 feet tall when I finished that thing. Right. Like that just God, it just that's exactly the kind of thing I think that just elevates this event in those guys. You're radicalizing the youth, TC. You got to get to get to start turning guys. Do. And you know what? I'll say this just as a fan, like. Like, like putting the media hat aside. I don't know where my media hat is back there, but putting the media <laughs> hat aside. Like Randy tweeted it earlier. Like there's there's one thing like to fail. There's another thing to fail in like spectacularly uninteresting fashion. And that's what yeah. Zach did. Like, well, like in the press conferences, like hey, KVV asked him the question last night of like, you know, hey man, like Ben Crenshaw said this, and you know, and, and like Zach just didn't want any part of that. Everything was was just mealy mouth bullshit from him in the interviews on site, in the pressers, in everything. It was just, it was the least inspirational leadership I've ever seen. And and it really like, like I know I'm rooting for the Europeans, but it like it, it made me embarrassed to be an American. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that shouldn't that make you embarrassed to be American, man. first and foremost. I understand <laughs> this is like just sports at the end of the day. It's a good joke and all. But uh, why does it have to be a former player? And if we're going to continue down this this route of former players, I don't think there's very many people coming like up to shoot past Zach that were these like incredible Ryder Cup stalwarts. Like, I understand the joke of we had tears in our eyes about Seve, but they have like these kids grew up watching you know, Stenson's and Sergio's and like H Jose Maria still. And like all these, these generational fucking superstars rocking the, uh, you know, the Ryder cup for them. And it's a, it's a motivating factor. So even though it is Luke Donald, who didn't have the best professional career, didn't have like the best Ryder cup record, but like he means more to the DP world tour and those people than anyone else. Like, I, I just don't see who that person could be on the U S side outside it's, of like, I mean, uh, obviously whoever they, they name for like name, whoever you want for Beth page, but for a dare manner, like why not look, bring up one of the college coaches, like bring up somebody who's like used to working with people and making it. So like number one, your captain is not also out there, like trying to make the team, what Zach also said, like, I can't remember if it was his Friday night or Saturday night presser. Yesterday. Right. Like, dude, like, stop thinking about that bullshit and figuring out, like, what is the best? Rely on your statisticians. Think of the course. Make it so, like, if you want to be on this team, all right, everybody knows JP McManus and the connection there to Adair Manor. Like, we're taking trips over there. Like, go scout the shit out of it because it feels like, Man, it's very weird because I listened back to the entire uh, final round recap from Whistling Straits and the exact same thing. Solly, your talking points, what the Euro team needed to do is what we're saying now for, for the United States. And you're right. It's just like this circle of like, all right, we're just going to keep passing this back and forth until something finally breaks. But I think there's something to be said for like if, if, like if Luke, if they run it back with Luke for New York and you have continuity going in, like should it be a four-year term? You know, or, or like, or like a, you know, a second Ryder Cup option. Also, Cody, like Luke, Luke's career to me, like, I know he didn't win a major, 
but his career oh, to get to number one in the world and all that, like yeah. to me, is more impressive than Zach Johnson. Hundred percent. I used to squeezed out of it. I used to wear and, those dumb Mizuno yeah. visors because he was my dude. <laughs> yeah, but 100%. but like that's the thing with Zach too. It's like we're talking about with the Europeans, like you know, Dodo and a few other guys basically identifying Ludwig earlier this year and saying like, hey, like this kid's going to be a future star for us. We might as well get him in the system now. Meanwhile, the U S is like Freddie couples is, is running around saying that Cameron Young's going to be on the team and, and it's Lucas Glover, Cameron Young, Keegan Bradley, and like who, whoever the fuck else has played well over the last three months. There's no, like, there's no DJ to your turn, blue flame thinking. <laughs> like, it's, it's very, it's just so fucking inside the box to whereas like the Europeans truly feel like they, they, you know what? Like, we might as well throw throw the kitchen sink at this thing and 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 not be afraid to get weird. Man, you guys got me fired up about it. I, I was, you know, TC, I mentioned yesterday, I was in the last year of my my contract with Team USA. Uh, I don't we're not gonna get into details now. Now is for focusing on the on the Ryder Cup. You know, we'll we'll take our seven days and get past the window and then maybe we talk some hot stove. Where's he gonna sign stuff? But uh uh, this kind of has me fired up about Team USA just in a like, let's fucking blow it up and let's reimagine some stuff. Let's think about how we can actually like build a real culture that's not just like the shittiest knockoff of another Age. culture that we can't possibly build anyways. I think that Here's has the to problem. come from like literally like that, that has to be yeah. Jordan Speed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I think and those Matt, guys. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. It, it's, it's just it, like I, I, I don't think like, this week's going to raise their hand and do that. You know? I don't think those. I don't think this week felt good for these guys. Can you <laughs> I don't imagine think if time. the U.S. I think they would be open to changing people. some shit. Can you imagine if the U.S. even considered, you know, like let's say Gordon Sargent turned pro in May? Could you imagine if they even considered him? How up yeah. in arms the you know everybody would be, yeah. and all the all the PGA Tour veterans and all that stuff. Also, like everybody's just gonna raise their hand and be like, "Well, Tiger." Tiger's the solution here. Tiger obviously needs to be the captain. And it's like, does he? Like they they showed up to Melbourne. I you know, I talked about it on Friday night. They showed up to Melbourne like jet lagged as fuck after playing the Hero World Challenge, not going down to the sand belt beforehand and playing any meaningful golf. And then and then basically like having their dick in their hand as far as strategy, the first four sessions at the President's Cup that year. So like I don't know if Tiger's the answer, and then Tiger, you're bringing all that oxygen back, back in the room with Tiger. That we we like we spent the last five years talking about Tiger and Phil and how how much oxygen they they sucked up in all these Ryder Cups and all these team competitions because they were the best individuals, but they weren't necessarily the best teammates. And now we're going right back to that. Yeah, I, I don't. Again, I don't. Nothing really changes for me for Beth Page. I, I don't have fear for the U.S. losing that one. I, ju I just don't. I think this is. I think what we're looking at is a wildly. Uh, I don't have the full explanation as to why. Because I again, if you missed any of the the shows earlier this week, I did a one a complete one eighty on Marco Simone, and I think the Euros made a a, a a little bit of a panic move near the end, but a last second move to cut down the rough uh, after their players didn't like it on the scouting trip. But it promoted a, a pretty neutral setup and a totally fine. There was no hijinks, right? It was an exciting style of golf, and I think it was not course setup that gave them any necessary, like any unfair or unseemly uh, advantage. That's like, all right, guys, we got to take course setup away from you. I think that happened so, in Paris. I, yeah, I but, hope you will. I hope you will take that to heart for for Beth Page. I mean, right now, for, for all we know, Davis Love is blowing up Hazeltine. He could be making this you know, the bad little nine, basically like <laughs> Bob Parsons, bad little nine for all we know and doing just all wedge play. Right. According to Azinger, you know, wedges just got taken out of the hands of, of the U S team. So he's going to put the wedges right back in the hands of them. All right. We could, we have, yeah, we got that was a great of, conversation. Yeah. I think there's a lot more to a lot more to come on that. And it just on your Marcus Monet take, because I don't think we said it yet. They should announce another Ryder cup there tomorrow. I, that was it was fucking great banger like 10 out of 10 in in pretty much every every category great sight lines great like honestly the logistics were good it was they easy were. that's easy crazy in, to easy hear out. that's i know that's like most shocking it. upset of the week 
Yeah. We, should, we should shout out BMW on that for helping sh- with some should. of our uh, logistics. But. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but it, it was fantastic. Would would love to see another Ryder Cup there. It was so much fun. I, I know like a lot of people probably think I'm miserable right now because of the, the result and some of the things I've said leading up to it and my expectation for it. But I had so much fun even with it, just within the micro sessions and, and the micro stuff within the matches is just – it's the it's the only event, man. It's so much fun. The crowd got so much better on uh on we kind of roast them on Friday for their first tee performance. Saturday and Sunday were awesome. They brought in, as we heard, the preeminent the, hype man of of England. The British hype man <laughs> who was just he was awesome. He oh was my God. so talented yeah. and just like calling people out. I have a funny story from that was he was like, All right, we got some <laughs> some Ryder Cup goodies to give away. And like, let's hear it for uh, best dressed is gonna get the goodies. And uh, we'll do some nominations. Stand up. Mr. Leprechaun, stand up. And everyone's like, yeah. And Mr. Uh, Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi, stand up. Everyone's like, hey. He goes, all right. And the winner goes too. And there's an uh, an old guy sitting in like the 10th row, long gray hair (laughs) with a long gray beard. And he's just sitting there. He's got sunglasses on. He's just kind of sitting there minding his own business. And he goes, you, sir. Moses, best costume, <laughs> and everybody lost. We got God on our side, and everybody lost it. It was so fun, and they played like good music. They encouraged chanting, and uh, they did the like, the Saturday scene of like USA is on fire or um, USA is terrified. Europe's on fire was like yes, like that is that is what's happening currently, and it was just rocking, man. And if you're ever thinking of going to, uh, uh, you know, if you're American and, and you ever want to go to a European Ryder Cup, I think a Dare Manor is going to be fantastic. I don't think Marco Simone is a good golf course. I think it it lended itself really well. If you, yeah, if, if I may note, um, it, it really it will uh, it lended itself to a great spectator experience, which we did say in the preview that yeah. part was a- very accurate, uh, just because of the hills and things like that. But a Dare Manor. it doesn't have quite as big, not not nearly as big a hills, and I don't know if the, the viewing is going to be as good. But atmosphere-wise, that place has to be awesome. I mean, the Irish are crazy for golf. It's such a better venue than K-Club. And I just think that that um, that European Ryder Cup has a chance to be all-timer. Shout out well, to like half the U.S. teams uh, played the course already from playing the McManus Pro-Am. That's, maybe, they'll, that's maybe they'll get that going again. Who knows? And I'm point. pretty sure, I think Xander won it, right? I think that's I think right. He, that was part of his won that, won that won the Scottish. Uh, Scottish, yeah. Guys, there is some breaking news. Uh you haven't seen any of this yet, but it, it's kind of making the airwaves. I don't want to uh, say up for an immediate reaction here, but it's nice to see, I guess, the guys making uh, sure that everybody's included, feel like they're part of it. Oh, oh no. Of a Brooks post that says, I make money moves with uh, some guys in Team Smash gear. <laughs> Wow. Very, very yeah, see, they're the team closest team you ever seen, That's guys. Right. But all their moves are always they're always troll moves. Exactly. Like there's not there, there's never any like yeah. they're never playing offense. It's always playing defense. <laughs> Where's Xander like, no, no, no. What's that? This everybody thinks we're not a, we're not together. No, no, look, we are. There's yeah. never any any proactive any proactive moves. They're always they're always defensive yeah. moves. Guys, I, something that I'd like to put a moratorium on heading into the next couple of years here is the whole notion of like, well, you know what? Like, yeah, the, like the fans have been great, but man, like the, if the U.S. fans did that, like the British journalists would just be all over us. I'm so tired of hearing. Like, can we just evaluate well, I, every? See, I think the reason situation. you're tired of hearing that is because the British keep doing that. <laughs> so I, I would start there. I think that's the like, source. You're, you're giving them way keep too much. Fucking doing it. They did it you're letting, 30 times. You're this letting week. John Huggin speak for every European fan and every. And it's like, like, listen, like he, he gets in a fucking tizzy about literally anything and everything. So at some point, and like, didn't step foot once on, on the course of the Solheim Cup. He <laughs> sat in front of us <laughs> and it's like, dude, like, I'm not going to take what you have to say seriously. Neither should you guys. Like, there's plenty of other, like, don't, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that, oh, this one, this one or five different scribes are going to dictate everything that the Europeans are saying about Americans. Because that's judging not from, judging from the volume uh, in the media center, I would not I would not venture to say it's five in terms of the eruptions that would happen in the media center uh, and the volume of which were happening at, at this at this but Ryder Cup. But that's disgusting. Kind of that, they're, that they're cheering in the media center just like they did at Solheim. 
either throw it right back at him, but but stop doing the false equivalency thing or the like, well, you know what? Like, like, yeah, like the fans were great, but like, and it's like, no, like the fans were great and they had creative cheers and all that versus like the fans, the fans of Beth Page are probably just going to be drunk and like uncreative and, and yeah. And it, you, know you know, but it's, gonna it's gonna be, <laughs> you know, what's going to be tough about Beth Page. I was saying this in the car on the way home. I, I want to be like, I think that's going to be such a uh, like self-fulfilling prophecy too. Like that's oh, going to yeah. be the, the storyline and it's going to get all the oxygen of just like, oh my God, these guys are going to be so loud. These guys are going to be so loud. These guys are going to be so loud. So what do you think these guys are going to do when they get there is just compete to be like the loudest, the loudest guy in the room. <laughs> like, yeah. it, like what's the worst thing I to can where, shout? To where like, uh, like, at, like at any point this week, I'm sure there were isolated instances, but like, did you just think, my God, this is awesome. What a great vibe. Everybody, like oh it's like God, a celebration of instead of an the whole time. Oh, the right? whole time. The whole time we thought that. That is that if I may, that's never the issue. Like everything that happened this week was one thousand percent above board. Absolutely. DJ, I got and, so tired of of listening to people say, Well, you know what? Like Joe LaCava had to put up with all these guys heckling his player. It was like it was good natured ribbing. It wasn't like fuck you, can't lay, you're a piece of shit, your mom's like a whore. Like it, it, like nobody's saying that stuff there. You know what there I mean? Was, like they're they're like uh, there was a lot of stuff. There were some questions. There was a, no, there was a lot of stuff yelled at Patrick Cantlay many, many times of a course of yesterday, and that's been like, over the head many, many times with a hammer. <laughs> that's the thing is like no one was really complaining about it. I think it was kind of like a all right. The reason probably behind Lacava acting out in the way that he did, which was still pretty fucked up, was like. Yeah, dude. I mean, a a year like we said this last night, like a European super fan tweeted out a story that was, you know, that ended up being a driving force for tens of thousands of people to heckle his player. Like that, that's what happened. Again, like, and the US team didn't complain about it, really. Like, I don't I mean they they discredited the report, but like didn't complain about the heckling and Patrick didn't complain about it. Like it just comes with the territory, but like we do this every four years when it goes to the U S it is just a, Oh, this would never happen in Europe. And the same shit happens on both sides. The heckling is definitely worse in the U S and more vulgar a like hundred um, times worse. Come on. It, it, but, but it, 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 it's still like they pretend like it doesn't happen in Europe and it hundred million percent does, but like it's it totally but like does. context. It, here's what like, I'll say. If we, if we get to if we get to Beth Page and they they throw out a this this is despicable this would never happen nobody ever cheers for balls in the water nobody ever does that blah blah that's, blah 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 that's fair then you're gonna you're gonna hear from us again because that happened a lot and Beth which Page is, is gonna be Which's different fine. than any of the other yeah, ones yeah. And it's gonna be way worse and almost everything they're gonna say about Beth Page is justified it's just the the whole attitude of pretending like stuff doesn't happen in Europe is like no it just none of the Americans yeah. we don't complain about it because it's totally this is the yeah. one event that's different this is fun it's all in good fun like Rory to Rory's credit and the, and the one thing that uh, we didn't say last night because we didn't have the quotes yet was he said uh, there was somebody I forget who reported this or where this came from is saying on both 17 and 18 he made an effort to quiet the crowd down or at multiple times in the match made an effort to quiet the crowd down and a bunch of European players did this at multiple times throughout the course of the event whenever there was heckling going on of like telling people to calm down and be quiet and he said he was not afforded the same opportunity on that final putt like that's pretty fair and justified that's what he's that's what set him off so much because yeah. he has gotten it really hard when he's come to the u.s yeah. and he's encouraged a lot of it like he if you're gonna go yeah. like that and people are gonna yell shit at you but also like that is a a part of the events but i i think he's justified in saying like yeah man like i was trying to uh you know calm people down but like that that was a little fucked up I it's guess. just not a it's just not binary right it's not zero or one like we're on a one yeah you know one to 100 scale and like let's just be fair about that right I think we can all agree that the scale is just, you know, you just don't do that. Like we you don't use do when you, but when you see something, you just got to call it out. You just, you just don't do that. You don't do that. Also, uh, before we get to Amsterdam too, I just want to say like, I'm not totally convinced that like the speed Thomas pairing is it. Like, I feel like we're just throwing everything against that and be like, you know what? Like, this is it. Like speed Reed was great. Right. Like Tom, like Justin Thomas could pair up with other people. I just feel like they keep throwing that against the wall as like some, you know, magic panacea. And it's just not that. And it's been really successful in a lot of Ryder cups um, and president's cups. It's, they were really, really good in France. They were decent at Wilson Straits and they've really done, they went four and zero at the president's cup together. It's, it was pretty decent sample size that says they're a good team. Now they were, 
Very, Justin Thomas is not the same player he's always been, and Jordan Spieth was not the same player this week that he's been. Um, but I wouldn't be quick to quick to throw out that pairing. I think that they'll we'll see him together probably at, at Presidents Cup and at, at at Beth Page. I think that was my we biggest just like takeaway. To see more more of them playing with other people. That's all I'm saying. Try some other stuff out. I think that was my biggest takeaway watching JT and and Spieth, and there's going to be people nodding their heads and spraining neck muscles. Uh, but Man, 2015, 2016, 2014, th those are long, long past years. <laughs> it, th that That's was sweet. a long time ago, man. And yeah. it's it's very, very clear watching watching it now. Just this is it's not uh it's not the same dude. It definitely feel that way, especially in stroke play. And I think I I just feel like in a vacuum I think in match been, play. Yeah, I think it's been obvious in stroke play for a long time. Yeah. We've been a little more fair on that, but yeah, I think you think that like what what rom said when they go oh when they get through those gates man something's just gonna happen and that's probably stupid thinking this is the first time it's gone wrong for speed yeah and, a, and jt in a, in a rider cup I, so i don't know if it's stupid thinking it's just it's stupid to think it's gonna go right every single time yeah. yes but um it's funny i was talking with one of the stats guys on just like how 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 people interpret um they don't really have an answer for like what the correlation is for you played well this time. Does that, what does that mean for your next match? Like it, it runs really strong in people's memories. Like, Oh, you don't sit the hot guy. Can't sit the hot guy when it's like, all right, well, Sam Burns, if that's the case, like he should have never played again. And then he had an awesome second match, even after a, a horrible first one, JT had a good first match, had two terrible matches on Saturday. Like it's just not as, uh, you know, when you're dealing in samples this small, it's just not nearly like, it's not ever going to be a hundred percent predictive. So, you want to just get Amsterdam uh, rolling here, TC? Yeah, that was covered first, today. Well, first of all, I just want to shout out Big Tone for how he kept his composure in that mid that mid cap, uh, you know, end of the bag challenge there with him and Annika, <laughs> drivers out of bunkers and stuff like that. Hell yeah! You know, the starter was pretty pretty malicious. So, just wanted to shout him out for that. No, I mean, I think we saw more more shots from Big Tone and Annika and Jeter driving home from his. You know, did he make it? Grounded. I, TBD. TBD. Um, I got so many questions about that commercial. Um, which, by the way, I got one of those vehicles. Is like, in, actually, DJ, we had it when we went to Alabama to uh, see Hartzell. And That's like, right. that, does not, that does not feel like a hundred thousand dollar vehicle when you drive it. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> throw that out there. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, guys, like, it was they lost track of things that like two, like there were like three matches on the course this morning. And sure enough, same. Same bullshit as the rest of the mornings. They they refuse to move off of any any sort of you know uh, versatility or adaptiveness. Like they they continue to just lock in. You're seeing the same blowout matches instead of the instead of the matches that are becoming increasingly important as the day goes along. I cannot emphasize enough how bad Azinger was, especially today, but really all weekend. Like it was clear that he he didn't do any shred of homework whatsoever. He was, he was throwing out the same lazy tropes, the same lazy two or three themes or stats that he had picked up from somebody along the way. Uh, he must have mentioned the clickbait article seventeen times today. Um, it was, it was just the, like the whole thing was pitiful. The, the the entire week, I think, you know, obviously we've gone in on NBC, Brian Roberts, like huge, huge Augusta National guy, huge drive chip and putt guy ostensibly gives a shit about growing the game like like i think the drive chip and putt is like one of his babies and it's like hey man like this is Sully, you said it last night like this is something that like you know casuals are going to tune into and maybe get more into golf right and it's just the most short-sighted myopic selfish greedy thinking from both them i think the pga of america also needs to wear it like there's so many fucking house ads and you know, yeah, like some of it, yeah, some of it probably does come down to like the, the, you know, uh, the size of the TV contract and the amount of ads they have to sell against it and all that stuff. I think it's just, it, well, it, I think it's that's also doctor. that, that yeah. storytelling piece of like, you know, can't lay being mad about not getting paid. And it's like, well, the house ads are, Hey, yeah. here's all the things we're doing with the money. Here's what we're trying to, you know, here's where the money's going. I think they're trying to like get that story out. Right. So it is kind of a, it's kind of a, whatever it's it's just pitiful like i just see like you know and then i'm sure we're gonna see a total onslaught from 
on air talent basically sticking up for their producers and blaming the world feed. When like I watched Sky a lot of the weekend, I watched World Feed. We're talking to other people, and like that's a totally different product, and they're they're going off the world feed too, you know, and they're 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 making do with it. They've they've completely neutered the budget to where there's no reporting, there's no there's nobody digging off camera or behind the scenes or or you know there's limited even on course commentary there's like you know yesterday we went what 80 minutes without seeing the speeth match and there's four fucking there's four matches on the course at a time it's crazy um it was just like it was like today like ludwig and 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 brooks like it took to i think we saw three shots of that on on the front nine we saw a shot 20 minutes late ludwig's second shot into the par 5 where he had, you know, he hit it to like three feet for Eagle. And it's, it's just so lazy. There's zero pride. Sam Flood, Brian Roberts, Aunt Molly, Pete Bavacqua, good luck at Notre Dame. Like you, you people should be ashamed of the product you're putting out. And Brian Roberts, like this thing's a rounding error for you. Like you, you own what, 30, 40% of Comcast. You're the, you know, chairman and CEO. Like if you give a shit about golf, stick up for us golfers a little bit, you know? And like, like, I'm sure there's something where they're, they're basically outsourcing a lot of this stuff back to Connecticut. And so, you know, I know the production staff waking up at 1 AM or 2 AM. Hey, I did the same thing. I woke up, you know, basically nocturnal this week, right? Like I know that's a lot. You're 5,000 miles away from where this thing's happening. That's, that's tough to be in a production truck, not on site, all that. But like, that's like, it's only going to get worse. Like they're pulling the LPGA commentators off the road and they're going to have them do stuff totally remotely the rest of the season. Like this stuff is only going to get worse. And it's not just, it's not just budget. It's also like Tommy Roy, you are completely and utterly washed. You are washed up. It is, it is, there's zero pride or emphasis on, subjective quality in the broadcast. I mean, cuts to commercials in the middle of swing impact, even, you know, showing stuff out of order to where you've already flashed up the score changing. And then 20 seconds later, you show us the putt or you don't show us somebody, you know, with a putt to tie. And then, and then you don't even tell us about it later. It's just, it is so piss poor. And I felt hoodwinked. It was it, it like, I know, we've kind of laid down our arms over the last year or two, as far as coverage goes, because CBS has stepped it up so much and, you know, it's just kind of been a dead horse, but I've never felt so like just kind of beaten down and just like, man, like I feel like a fucking idiot for being a golf fan and for waking up at 2 AM or 3 AM to watch this. And it's the, the, the hubris and the arrogance and just the, the lack of pride in the product Seth Waugh should be concerned. John Lindert with the PGA should be concerned. Uh, everybody with the European tour, like this is, this is a golf problem. This isn't a PGA tour problem. This isn't a, a professional golf program. This is a golf problem. And it's, it's a black eye for the game. Sorry, we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Macklemore out there? <laughs> um, I think, I, I, look, yeah, there's nothing we haven't said. I think it's all right. Well, let's try a new angle, and we can continue to try a new angle. Here, here's a new one that I don't think I've tried. Hey, go, insert golf exec. Between like basketball, baseball, football, hockey, tennis, uh, if you had to like, where if you had to rank how your television product works compared to those, where where do you think you rank? Like, where do you think you rank in terms of like creating entertainment and like telling the story? Because I'll tell you where it is. It's dead fucking last. Like, it's without a doubt dead last because you're the one sport that doesn't go, like, the game doesn't stop when you go to commercial. So, like, your burden is much heavier, but somehow your commercial loads are higher than all of those. I, I almost certainly, I don't have the numbers, but, like, almost certainly are. So, what what's your plan to increase this viewership, right? This is the most maddening thing that can happen with anyone. What is the actual plan to increase it? Because you're not actually showing us the golf, the tournaments and you're not creating any excitement with it. any excitements are immediately quelled by a commercial break. So t- explain to me how you like emerge from the bottom spot of all of those sports. Like, please go Mr. Executive. There's no answer to that. And, and like zinger, I mean, it's like, dude, like you're zinger zinger was like, 
F minus this weekend. I mean, he was that bad. I thought, like, I mean, I watched a lot of the world feed. Hunter Mahan was awesome, right? I've watched a great. lot of Sky lately. Like those, like their commentary is good. It's it's not just the production. It's not just this or that. I mean, Peacock went down completely at one point this weekend, like on Saturday, where people couldn't even watch European tour or uh, soccer. You know, the Did they uh, moved the, live uh, from to Peacock too. Live yeah, from wasn't yeah, even couldn't. Awesome. Couldn't watch live from last night. Uh, it's 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 a total race to the bottom. And like, like all right, cool. Like, how do you guys make money off of soccer, right? Like, it's 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 fucking forty five minute halves plus stoppage time with no commercials. And you're telling me that like, like these these salaries are this or these transfer fees are this, and 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 they're dying to get more and more and more soccer rights. How do you monetize that? Like, let's. Let's try something, guys. It's just, and then like Tom, Tommy Roy, I'll, I'll tell the the tap room story because people have been talking about that. He, he basically just saunters up to us, and Cody, you were there, saunters up to us in the tap room at Pebble Beach the Sunday night after the uh, U.S. Women's Open. Allison Corpuz had just walked in. A bunch of USGA people came over and said, hey, thanks for, you know, thanks for your coverage this week. Thanks for being here. Da, 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 da. Tommy Roy saunters over and just says, hey, like, you know, being sarcastic, but like introduces himself and then basically just keeps saying the same thing over and over again. Thanks so much for your positive coverage this year. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. And, and we're like, hey, guys, like, honestly, we thought you guys did a great job this week. Like, you know, hats off. Like you, you stepped it up. It was good coverage of Pebble this week. We were impressed. Da, 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 da. And he just keeps hammering at home, hammering at home. to the point where it was so hostile and aggressive and overly sarcastic that like, I, I just lost all respect for the guy. Like have some, have some pride, have some dignity, Tom, not, and you know what? I'm not even gonna call you Tommy. I'm going to call you Tom because you're, Dude. you're a fucking 50 year old. Go by Tom or Thomas. That's he was where, a straight like, up, he, he was a straight <laughs> dick. It was, it was really, really bad. One of the most unprofessional like experiences that I've been at since like being working in the game of golf. Like I never would have expected like somebody at that level of a position at any of these organizations that would just straight out treat people like that, who, who clearly like paid a ton of money to come showcase this event. Like we, we literally just got done talking with Allison Corpus who won the event and he just was like the biggest dick in the world. And like, I get it. We're, we're rough on him. We're hard on him, but man, like if that's, that's the way you're going to go about it, like, there's kids in like the twins is, you know, first grade class that, that handle things a hell of a lot better than he did. Yeah. It was, it was like immature, unprofessional and, and really it just, it was a glimpse into his ego because I think it yeah. probably at every turn we've tried to point the finger at like, it's the commercial load, it's budget cuts. It's, it's this thing that you're saddled with. And over the last four to six months, it's like, you know what, man, like Tommy, dog like you've you've lost the magic touch you're part of the fucking problem and and talking to industry people that isn't wrong i don't think it's it's the what bothers me the most about it all is the lack of the understanding of uh the burden on you which is like hey if 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 we were the only like literally had all the rights to the to golf podcasting this is the only place only place you can cover golf discussion on the internet like that's the only place the show would look a lot different. Like it wouldn't be as much dumb bits. Like it wouldn't like, this is about, we, we're in a different, we operate in a different stratosphere where it's like, Hey, we can kind of do our own dumb shit. And like, if you like it, great. If not find a better option, we do not have another option when it comes to watching the golf. Like you have saddled, you have the burden on you to like make us happy. And look, if, if people were telling us, you guys are wrong. Golf coverage is great. You guys are just whiny bitches. We do get a couple whiny bitches comment, but like if if the sentiment was different amongst people, we wouldn't harp on it. But like people are furious, like furious. They're trying to be fans of golf and absolutely hating the time they spend watching it. That is such. It is the 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 bar to clear is not that big, and they're falling so woefully short short of it. And guys, I just have no hope. I have absolutely no hope that things will change. It. it it doesn't like just Tommy changing over doesn't change it. Like it's just a a seething problem uh, within NBC Comcast, and it's not. And there's and there's there's, there's hook, plenty of people moving on. There's bad people leaving bad people there. On both there's, sides, DC. There's good people leaving there too, right? Like it's 
it's all to your point. It's not getting any better. They're firing editors and producers and, and, you know, laying people off. It's just not everything needs to be like, you don't have to squeeze every single dollar out of everything. And I think that's the job of like the PGA of America and the USGA and others like need to kind of step up to the plate and say, Hey, you know what? Like the golf fan matters too. Like the yes. person, the person watching this because because in the long run, this is what creates fans. This is what creates Which is people what? that are going to play the game in the next 15, 20, 25 years. Like it's it, like at some point we're going to talk about systemic issues that are caused by this lack of give a fuck from the golfing establishment about what the product is. Which is my, which is what Mike has done with all the USGA events. I mean, I they, they got absolutely blasted in 2019 and 2020 for the, a ridiculous commercial load. And you see how much their products have turned over. And like even this year's US Open, like I, that was the the event where I counted all the commercials. Like it got better on the weekend when like they actually did buys for to go commercial free. Shit, we had commercial free last week for the Solheim Cup, thanks to KPMG. Like we didn't have shit for that. This but week. also the LPGA is paying out of pocket. Yes. To NBC and NBC They're still buying airs a middle finger. And then also like like don't bitch about the world feed when you guys are the ones signing up to take the world feed and not sending your own production crew to even be on site to decipher or translate the world feed onto your feed. It's, it's just, it's like at some point golf channel doesn't golf channel and NBC don't have an interest in golf. At some point it's like, like it's like, this is your job to cover golf and and you're not even doing that. Like, you know, like live from going to Peacock is a perfect example. Playing lessons from the pros was on. It's not like they were televising. From a pro, from a pro not from the pro. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's a total abdication of like, like at some point, like I'm paying however many dollars a month for Golf Channel or not anymore as of this week because I'm, I'm cutting the cord, uh, Brian Roberts. But, um, you know, it's, it's like at some point, like, what am I paying for with Golf Channel, right? Like you've, you have no interest in covering else like that. Yeah, you have no interest in covering Corn Ferry Tour. LPGA yeah. has to pay you to show up. Like it's, at some point, like think of it as an opportunity and say, you know what? How can we? How can we? Like flip this thing around and turn this into an asset that we're going to make money off of. It's it's just it's it's fucking pitiful, and and everybody involved should be ashamed. But I know what we're going to get tomorrow. We're going to get either a business sports business journal or something else. Yeah. A nice shiny post that says what our viewer count was. And that's going to be a big old success in Connecticut for the boys. And we're just going to keep on going. And, and oh, yeah. that's just how it's going to be. All right, guys, it's getting close to midnight here. Unless there's something urgent that needs uh, to be said, we are, uh, we would love to get to the, to the closing part of this. Uh, I so want to can... give a big, big shout out here. You want to talk about pressure of this week? Yeah. There's there's no people <laughs> this week who played under more pressure than fucking Siwoo Kim and Sunjay. All right? These these boys went out representing South Korea with two other amateurs on their team and won the gold medal in the Asian Games. There's only two ways that they can get out of mandatory military service for the South Korean military. One of them is an Olympic medal. The other one is the gold medal at the Asian Games. Now, what it sounds like is that uh, they completely they won? The, the Thailand took second. They whipped their ass by twenty five strokes. So I think <laughs> the boys uh, did a number on stacking it so they they could get out of here. But shout out to them. Uh, you know I'm a big military guy, but it, I, I've seen what happens when they go through and do their uh, their conscription time. It it takes a long time. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. Amen to that. And also to all the people in the comments saying like like. You know, Comcast, NBC, they're, they're just trying to make a profit. At some point, like, they're just trying, like, not to lose money on something. And at some point, like, it, like let's try to make, like, try to make a profit on LPGA or try to make a profit on, like, it, I think if you invest in the product a little bit more, like, or, you know what, like, do a pay-per-view option for this and see how it goes. Pay-per-view, banner ads, board. fucking borders, Whatever. you name it. I don't give a shit. Just show the golf. Yeah. Uh, I also want to shout out LPGA Linea Strom is there's four or five holes left. Linea Strom, another Swede we've got coming. Uh, she's, she's one back at the moment. I want to shout out my girl, Lexi, 
for showing up this week. Shot 65, 69, 66. Went straight from Spain to Northwest Arkansas and and showed up. Direct. No, she was on my flight. Yeah, they flew to uh, <laughs> Zurich. Yeah, so, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. And the last thing I got on the Ryder Cup, Europe, we got to do a better job with the uniforms. Randy said mm -hmm. it last night. I said it on Friday. They're really bad. Like, like if anything, license to talk to Jay Lindbergh. Get weird. Get really sure. avant-garde. Like, you know, let's get out there. Instead of just these, this color block, Laurel Piana thing, that's just, it's bad. Bad hats, bad materials. You name it. It's bad. That I want to shout out. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, we're not going to let you go. I want to shout out you guys. Awesome week of coverage. I know it's a uh, long days, long nights. Uh, thanks for getting all the uh, horses in the barn to make sure that they're are well taken care of and and can get out and run the next day. We are we waiting on anything? KVV written pieces. We should expect tonight, tomorrow. Yeah. DJ, Kev's, you mentioned some from you. Kev's writing uh, downstairs as we speak. I would imagine that'll be out in the next uh, couple of hours uh i forget it's still early over there you guys got the whole damn day ahead of you so look look out for kvv's uh game story probably kind of a scenes piece type of uh type of situation from him and then i think i'm gonna write something uh we'll see either on the plane or or when i get back um people i got a lot of very very nice notes about an observations piece i wrote for the walker cup so i'm gonna maybe write something a little similar uh for lay rider cup uh, I want to give another shout out to our friends at BMW for setting us up so well with everything we could have possibly needed. Uh, it's harder than it may, people may think just to get back in time and set up with a nice location with a decent connection, mostly decent connection, uh, to do the show for such long periods of time. But uh, gosh, they've just always put us in position to succeed uh, with all of our content, elevate our content, especially around the Ryder Cup. Uh, it has been a blast to dedicate as much time uh, as I have to this topic over the last several <laughs> years. Uh, it's, it's tough to take some major L's and wear a lot of fedoras over this past weekend, but <laughs> it is a blast and it is, uh, still my favorite event. Extremely fun event. Um, we, we shouted out all the golf channel people. I think we got to shout out the BMW people, Justin, Christina, Holly, Balash, Marcus <laughs> on the positive uh, side, Lauren, everybody who, everybody who helped us out this week. Thank you guys very, very much. It's, it's fantastic. You, sometimes you need to lean on people. You got and, it. You got it. Yeah, uh, just like guys, I want to shout them out for the for, for the the captain cam as well. That turned into one of my favorite, like unintentionally <laughs> funny elements of the weekend of just like Zach rolling around with his fucking agent in his cart, like which just says it all to me. Uh, you know, and, and it was just it was very much like, oh, like here's a pop in of Zach looking, you know, just just riding around Marco Simone like a deer in the fucking headlights. So. <laughs> Boys, this Thanks is a wrap TV. for live shows for the year. It huge, is. huge Thank shout you, out Cody. to High Noon, Sunsets. The sun's always out. Uh, delicious beverages, if you ask me. But thank you for a hell of a ride. If uh, yeah, thank you to Cody, who's run the ones and twos on all of these all year long. It's a uh, it's a Amen. it's a lot of hours. Big big job, and uh, you have rocked it all year and elevated it and. We'll be back, uh, hopefully, to do them again next year because it's uh, it's been a it's a fun undertaking on our content front, and uh, uh, it's it's always fun to see people in the live chat, and, uh, you know, j j uh, jabbing us a little bit and laughing along with us. It's it's really fun. It helps make the show a lot better. I really do think so. Uh, on that note, uh, I would like to not think about the, the Ryder Cup for a while, and I'm excited to get home and uh, see the family and uh, get back into the swing of things. Hope 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 fall is ready for me when I get home. TC. Oh, it's it feels great. It's been super windy here the last few days. It feels great. Uh, we got the guy running into the the uh, oh, water here. It looks like Colonel Sanders. Uh, <laughs> I, guys, guy also, dressed, it's he, credential? he was dressed like a referee. Like he looked like he, he was the referee of the match, <laughs> and he just sprinted across the green, jumps in the water, and then he swims around for a little while, splashes around, and then he gets out of the water, and then everybody's like starts cheering for him and he kind of is like messing he's like fucking with the crowd now and then he turns around and dives back in the water head first this time and he wanted to do it for the third time with the security cape we're like all right i think i think we've been pretty cool why don't you get the fuck out of here while the final match was on the tee you know that's, what that's true you don't do that you just don't do that so that's a wrap everyone thank oh. you everyone for tuning in we'll see you back here next year Good. i mean we'll keep doing podcasts but live shows <laughs> next year cheers. Good cheers. Stuff, cheers i'm so tired oh my god <laughs>